one to order. Can we uh, stand and say a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag United of the United America, States of America, America to the republic, republic which, it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And can I get roll call, please? Ken Nelson. Here. Linda the Gray. Here. Mary Scott. Absent. Virginia Higley. Here. Francis Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. OK, thank you. I would like to see both alternates for the absent commissioners. Um, John Petronella and Vinnie Grillo for the remainder of the meeting. Uh, next, can we get an approval of the minutes for February 25th, 2021? Second. Motions made and seconded. Is there any corrections, concerns that any just, of you have? Just one, because I was kind of confused on page one where it said, Actually, right on after roll call, there was a motion and then another motion. So I don't remember having to withdraw the first ones. Probably did, but I don't know. It said a motion. Well, the motion, the motion, right? Because there was a change. I made a change. So you made okay. a motion. Then there was a motion to approve as amended. Okay. All right. Nope. I, I didn't remember it. It's called uh, being old. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll, um, all in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Right here. I'll abstain. Rich is going to abstain? Yeah. So, so I wasn't there at the meeting, so I can't verify what was actually said. You mean you didn't watch it? <laughs> I did not watch it. All right. Um, moving on. The town attorney's report, we received that in writing. Did any of you have a chance to read it? And if you did, do you have any questions you'd like to, or comments you'd like to address to the town attorney? Nope. I read it, but I don't have any questions. Is there, uh, Mr. Chairman, is there any updates? Because this was written, there was a conference on a 5th. So today is the 11th. We do think that we can discuss without executive session. Right. I'm That's sorry, Larry. There's nothing that we can discuss without executive session. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing none, the CEO's report in writing. Anybody get a chance to read it? Yeah. This is about the, uh, the, the cellar basements, egress. Yes. I have it here. So I understand the concerns with this issue. I've done a lot of basement remodels over the years and technically even raised ranches fall under this category that um, in the town of Enfield, you are not allowed to have bedrooms um, or finished living space in your basement. If in all other towns, if you can, if you can supply a uh, legal means of egress through the building codes, they allow you to do this, whether you're a raised ranch or um, a regular basement, if you cut an egress windows with window wells, you're, oh, Rich is here. So why did you send it in writing? I'm sorry, Rich. I just wanted to give everybody an update and, and so that you could actually look at uh, the concerns ahead of time. That's all. Okay. So Frank, it's hard to hear your hear you if you can turn up your volume somehow. I'll try to get a little closer. How's that? Better. A bit better. So the building department in Enfield, if it meets code, they don't have an issue with um, living space in the basement or bedrooms. 
And the way our regulation is written right now is depending on a raised ranch, how much backfill is against the foundation determines whether or not it's considered a basement or um, a colonial. Now, the problem with it being a colonial is it's a colonial without a basement. And in Enfield, you're not allowed to build a house on a slab. You have to have a basement or a raised ranch. So the regulations kind of contradict themselves there also. So I would, I, I would definitely or strongly agree that um, we have Rick move forward with this, looking into it. Maybe we can, you know, get a letter from the building official or have him in also. But if it's me, legal egress, I don't know how we can deny people um, living space in their basements or bedrooms. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, Lori went in here. I certainly uh, feel that this is really not so much of a PZC issue, but it's a building department issue. Right, but it's in our codes. So I, I know, but I'm not sure why or how. Exact, right. And in all other towns, it's not. It's strictly a building official code. I mean, if you can't get out of your basement, you're not doing it, which I totally support that. You know, you have a fire and you burn to death. It's not, it's not good not being able to get out. So, um, I mean, what do you suggest, Lori? Remove it from the regulation? Um, I, I would. I, I really just don't even feel that it's the BCC's purview to make that determination. It truly is a building code issue. I mean, it obviously is going to re um, require some sort of a, a text amendment, but we can move forward with that should the commission feel... Uh, and the, you know, feel that it's a positive move. Commissioners, you, you know, I that you know, right now we're we're revamping our regulations for planning and zoning, and and why don't we just address it when we revamp the, the, the our regulations in terms of, you know, right now, it, you know, I think that it, it's not a enforceable, you know, part of the regulations only because, like you're saying, that if it meets the building code realistically they they should be able to do that you know in their own home they, you, you know. can't get a zoning permit though so you can't get a building permit this comes up quite a bit I, I, I for 30 years we've been doing it and you know how many people have done this and said it was a home office to get around the bedroom and then they don't put a means of egress in because they're trying to cheat the system we're almost forcing people to do things illegally that endanger their family. If we work with them, go ahead, Rick, I'm sorry. No, no, that, that's fine. And, and that's exactly what the problem is. Someone will come in and the building permits have to come through uh, the software and I approve them or deny them, whatever <clears> the case may be. And just to skirt the issue, they'll change the, the uh, plans to show that it's just living area. And there's no safety built into that because building department goes in and inspects it for just living area and, and that's it. So we wind up with uh, not having any type of sa safety issues being covered by the building uh, officials when they go and they inspect. I, I'd much rather have it come in and be able to um, approve it as bedroom and then ensure through the building department that there's egress and whatever other necessary means to insert secure safety for anybody that might be sleeping in a basement. I think that's a good idea if we can find a way to encourage people like uh, Chairman Nelson was saying to do it correctly and for safety and then you know they could use their house and feel comfortable and I can tell you from experience you wouldn't want to know how many people are living in basements now, there is a lot unsafe basements, you know, and I'll just let it stay there, but I can tell you for sure from experience. Go ahead, Lori. Um, I, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Suzak's statements that, you know, we're in the middle of, of uh, updating all of our regulations. However, this would be a quick fix and it would solve a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, issues in getting the zoning permits out there. So, I mean, it's, it, this isn't something that we have to analyze and and look at and, you know, think back and forth and, and debate. I think it's pretty straightforward. So it would be very simple. 
And, and I agree in terms of if we can do it with a text amendment change and, and it's a relatively simple thing, then, then we should do it as soon as possible. You know, the only thing that, that comes to mind is that there's always going to be somebody who, in order to make the bedroom, you know, egress access, accessible, will have, it'll cause them some additional financial costs and then they'll just skirt around, you know, the whole issue like they're doing right now. So, but, but at least, you know, we would have the mechanism that says, you know, you could do it, but you got to do it right. And yeah. that, you know, if we find out that you're doing something wrong, we will make you do it right. And regardless of, you know, you, and, and again, I, I'm not sure that, you know, whether we're, we would grandfather every existing bedroom that's in a basement right now, or whether I think they still need to be rectified only because of that fact that if there is a fire and there's no way out, you know, you're, again, lack of a better word, you're toast in terms of, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it's, you know, going to be, there will come a time when something will happen. And then all of a sudden, somebody's going to say, well, how did this happen? And, and what we need to do is at least address that, you know, it, it's okay if you do it, but you got to do it right. Right. And, and you have a lot of people that are there with the newer bedrooms. They're taking two of the bedrooms, making it one, making a master bedroom suite. And what they do to adjust for the loss of the third bedroom is they're building one in the basement. This allows them to legally build one in their basement properly. Now, mm -hmm. I, by all means, Rich, I'm not saying we're grandfathering. If it's not inspected for a bedroom, and it's not a bedroom. So all those people who have changed the regulation or changed the paperwork like Rick was referring to saying <coughs> not a bedroom, it's an office. It's not automatically going back to a bedroom. If they want to make it a bedroom, they need to pull the proper building permit, even if it's just to check for egress windows. And also you have to have a smoke detector in a bedroom and outside the bedroom door. Those are really the two big things that would need to get done. And something as simple as that adds a lot of value to a person's house because now it's a legal bedroom. You can also make legal in-laws in the basement now if you follow it properly. And, and I think this is huge for the community to do. And I think you're going to, yes, there's always somebody who's going to try to skirt the system, but they're going to be the ones who don't pull a permit for their basement, period. <clears throat> so I, I personally am ready to go on this now. Lori can draw up. I don't know. Vinny, John. I agree. I have no, no I take no exception to that, Ken. Vinny. I also agree. Linda. No. I agree. Okay. So you have consensus, Lori. Um, maybe you and Rick, if it's a simple removing the text, I, however you do it, I'm not going to get into that. We'll, we'll work it out now that we have directed. Okay. Um, anything else, Rick? No, just as, uh, as mentioned in the report, it was active to a certain extent over the, uh, well, ever since COVID started. And uh, there are a couple situations that went to the actual citation and uh, I may be coming, the, the problems haven't been rectified. So I may be coming back before the commission and asking to go to the next step with the town attorney on a couple. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I ask Rick a question on another matter? Absolutely. We have that hand button, remember. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Rick, um, the entrance to Georgetown apartments, condos, have you gotten any calls in the last couple of days? The last week, it looked like somebody was starting to set up a used car lot. Today, yeah, not sent, as much. I already sent out a notice of violation last week. Wow, you're on it, man. I was like, what are these, th what are these people thinking? You can't do that. I don't know what to tell you. There's only one car there today, though, so you must have took effect. Must have. Good job. All set, Frank? Yep, thank you. Okay. Rick, anything else to add? No, that's pretty much it for now. Lori says you're pretty slow in the office <laughs> around yeah. lunchtime. We're not doing anything. Uh, I'm sleeping there. Twiddling our thumbs.
Thanks for coming tonight, Rick. Have a good night. Take care, Rick. Okay, public participation. Is there anybody out there who would like to speak to the commission about any issues that are not currently on our agenda? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Anyone? Okay, seeing none. Bond releases. I don't see any tonight. Lori's shaking her head no, so we're good with that. Moving on, continued public hearings. Public hearing 2993, 0 Elm Street. Uh, can I have roll call, please? Ken Nelson. Here. Linda the Gray. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. Vinny Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. For the record, Carl Landolina, Fahey and Landolina, Windsor Locks, representing the applicant. We were here a few weeks ago, as you recall, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, regarding our application for a zone change on a, uh, a lot in the, I'll call it the Namdar subdivision that you approved about a year or so ago. Uh, this lot, as you recall, is located uh, between the Hanush Jewelers building and the mobile gas station. It's 1.472 acres, as I recall, and um, fronting on Elm Street with uh, um, mobile to the west, Hanush to the east, and uh, to the south of us is the um, uh, one of the interior road uh, part of the interior road system for the uh, mall. I represent the contract purchaser, and um, we obviously have a contract with the owners of the mall to purchase this um, contingent on getting the property rezoned from its current zoning of business regional to a business general zone. The use which we'd like to uh, establish on the property is not allowed in the BR zone, but it is allowed in the BG zone. And I think we had a, um, a good discussion last time. There were some concerns by, uh, on some of the part of the commissioners regarding sort of uh, precedent setting value uh, issue, whether or not approving this would have, uh, make it more likely that you'd have to approve um, another applicant in the subdivision who wanted to have a zone change. And I think we discussed this last time and I don't know if anyone's talked to the town attorney or staff relative to this, but I think I explained that this is a legislative decision and um, those are made individually and they have really no uh, presidential value with respect to a subsequent application. They're judged on their merits uh, individually. There was some discussion about uh, another about an acre parcel, which is located to the west of the mobile station. I think it's lot one on the subdivision um, in sort of in the same sort of uh, posture as our lot. And, you know, obviously we don't control that lot. And um, I don't know what, you know, it's being marketed as we speak, as is our lot. And the question I think arose as to whether or not that would be appropriate for his own change as well. And I, I think there was some discussion with staff about that. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, you have now have in front of you um, was a question that came up is what are the real differences? And I prepare my own list, but staff beat, it, beat me to it in terms of getting you the, uh, the list. Um, so there are uh, some uses that are not, for the most part, if uh, I sort of remember this from geometry class back in, what is that, 10th grade, 11th grade, the Venn diagram. If you had a Venn diagram of the uses allowed in the BR and BG zone, there'd be a lot of uh, there are some uses allowed in one and not the other. And I think you have in front of you as part of staff's report, a list of those uses that are not allowed in the BG uh, or excuse me, allowed in the BG, but not currently allowed in the BR. And, um, there's probably like two, four, six, eight, nine of them. Um, 
I only see two of those as really being viable for a lot in, in the size which we're talking about, perhaps three out of animal hospitals, car washes, uh, establishments with liquor permits with entertainment. I, I don't know if that would fit on that size. Uh, a place of worship, printing and publishing, driving restaurants, funeral homes. And, um, and there's also, I think, attached to that is a list of uses allowed in the, uh, uh, in the BR, um, you know, but most of them wouldn't fit health clubs, heliports, hotels, motels, research laboratories. I, I think you wouldn't find any of those on a, a, a one acre or one and a half acre parcel. So um, uh, you also have the uh, a report from staff. I would, as you're well aware, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, the statute and your regulations provide that any zone change must be at least consistent with the plan of conservation and development. I know you're in the process of uh, starting um, your review of the uh, old plan of conservation and development as well as working on your a new set of regulations, but uh, the old POCD is what we have to go by. And there's an interesting uh, section about the, some, the future of that POCD. There's quite a bit of uh, discussion related to this sort of central business district, which was for uh, this area of town along Elm Street. And I think it may have stretched from the highway all the way to uh, to uh, as Nantuck Community College was the division for this sort of central business district. And especially the, you know, the mall property uh, features um, prominently in that vision for the town. And if you look at the plan of conservation and development, uh, I'll just refer to it briefly. Specifically, what was planned for that area was a, a mixed use sort of uh, development that would include some residential and in in with, uh, in, in with the retail uses and the higher density uses. Um, matter of fact, I, I think there's a, a great drawing on uh, page 25 of your PSD that sort of that's out how you know the retail uses would be along the perimeter and in the interior of the site would be larger mixed use buildings, including the possibility of uh, residential structures up to 10 stories high. Uh, obviously, I don't think your regulations provide for that, but you know, the POCD is a plan. And then as you move along, you try to incorporate some of those ideas into the regulations. I'm not sure, you know, whether they're going to make it into this version or not, but um, you know, and um, in commercial establishment, you were going to ask in commercial establishments for setbacks to be changed a little bit. So, um, in that the mall would go from a uh, you know a single use development to a mixed use, including standalone uh, buildings. So that's what we're asking for: a zone change to um, accommodate the use which we have uh, intended. You know, we haven't made any. Uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that for, for us, we're planning a car wash there, something uh, we are still subject to the, you know, easements and covenants and restrictions that are uh, encumbering the entire parcel. And I, and I think I mentioned last time that those are fairly restrictive. We have aesthetic uh, uh, directions that we have to follow. And, um, you know, I, I don't know that you care to look at it, but we have a, a mock-up of a very, um, stylish, I, I guess I would say for a car wash, a sort of colonial type building that, you know, would front on uh, Elm Street and all the activity would be to the rear. Um, so you wouldn't, and it would have sort of like these fake windows on the side. And, and, and we've still, you know, we were dealing with the folks that own the mall in terms of uh, how the thing might look. And, and obviously they have an interest to protect and make sure that, um, you know, that, that what what's happens on any of those properties doesn't harm any of the, you know, the, the tenants in the mall, specifically the, the anchor tenant at this point would be Target, you know, so they'll have input in the process as well. Um, but we think this is a good use for this property next to an existing automotive type use. Um, we think that uh, it's going to fit well into uh, the vision and character of this area. There's a lot of BG uh, zone property in the area, including Hanoush Jewelers right next door. Um, obviously we're not asking for, and won't be asking for a, a curb cut or encroachment permit onto one 
onto Elm Street. Everything will be accessed through the easements along the roadways, the internal system. Um, and I did see that uh, your consultant, who uh, Don Poland, I, I think someone may have asked last week, one of the commissioners, whether he was aware of this or consulted on it or whatever. And I did see that he had a response. So, and um, you can read his response for yourself. I, I agree with staff and, and Mr. Poland uh, about their, um, you know, their ideas that this is, you know, given that the, the, the existing BR and BG zones overlap so much that this is not really a big stretch to change it from one to the other. So we have to answer questions by any members. Commissioners. <clears throat> no one? I do. I raised my hand. I don't see, I'm just... <laughs> oh. I even physically did it. <laughs> Go ahead, Linda. All right. Um, I did read Don's opinion, and it is his personal opinion. He doesn't live in Enfield, and, and I respect him because he's very knowledgeable. But I still feel once we start rezoning these parcels, it's letting the genie out of the bottle and we can't get it back in. And what's to say in two, three years that Hanush closes and then we've got this one building here and then we've got the car wash that they, the car wash people decide to merge with the Hanush property because they buy it and now they're going to expand I, I just i'm feeling not and i'm not against car washes because i go all the time but i just feel uncomfortable still about rezoning this one piece and and i understand it's along elm street and people are seeing it that way but once we start cutting up this property it just seems that we can't put the genie back in the bottle that's just my concern and i understand it wouldn't be a far stretch but it's just the idea that's not what the intent was for this area well it's my personal opinion. if i may you've already cut up the parcel you've already approved the subdivision of it so we're not cutting up the parcel. We're just uh, adding a use to it that uh, is consistent, we believe, with the PLCD. Well, and, I do have uh, to correct you on that, Carl, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but no, that's right. we, of course. no, no, we didn't cut it up. Well, Namdar did. Yeah, you, but and you approved we it. We really yeah. didn't have, you know, we were kind of told that there was no reason not to approve it. Mm -hmm. So kind of said yeah you got to do it okay we did it mm -hmm. but i still feel uncomfortable because now they the owner of that property cut it up into smaller parcels and now they're saying oh well we can't sell that parcel and use it for this so now you have to come back and rezone it and that wasn't the intent that we thought they had for that property and it has nothing to do with this gentleman who wants to open the car wash mm -hmm. and it's it's just we were i guess when the, they came to the commission and they asked to do this we were under the impression that they had the same kind of vision we did and now we're finding it's not so i, I guess i'm feeling a little back against the wall you know, and, and it just doesn't feel comfortable to me. That's not what the intent was for that piece of land. I, I, and I, and it's just my personal feel. It's my view because I've lived in this town all of my life. I don't feel comfortable doing this again and constantly being said, oh, well, well, it's only this little piece here. It's only a little piece here. It's only a little piece here. But those little pieces get changed and it's not just for today or for that one business 
it gets changed forever. And not that that's a bad thing, but we don't want a bunch of, a hodgepodge of empty buildings that we already have making it even worse because we don't know where retail is going to go. We don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just uncomfortable. And that's, again, my opinion. Thank you, Linda. Commissioner Hagley. I agree with everything Linda said. I think that uh, we have concerns if we, like she said, it's genie. You're opening up the genie in the bottle. My concern also is the fact that should we approve this, it's a site plan. And as a site plan, basically we can only um, decide, the, we can only look at the location. We can't look at um, anything, the aesthetics of the building. We can't look at the hours it's run, uh, days it's open. I, I just don't feel comfortable. That definitely would be letting the genie out. And that's my opinion. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Rich, you know what? John Petronella. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I went back and looked at the approval of the subdivision back in January, I think, of uh, 2020. Just kind of read through the uh, minutes of the meeting uh, uh, and so forth. And, and uh, you know, based, based on the conversations there, uh, I, I, I agree pretty much with uh, 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 Commissioner DeGray and, and, and Higley as well. Now, now this mall property, uh, I look at it as, as I, I know it's cut up and we approved it for 13 lot subdivision, but, but to us, we deemed it as one big property that zoned uh, 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 business regional. And, and, uh, um, to, to, and, and the Hanoush piece, I think, was never part of the mall property. It was always independent, and, and it, it was BG. But anyway, if, if, if we go this route, are we letting the genie out of the bottle, as, as, as uh, previously stated, whereas the other parcels are going to be coming in uh, uh, independently, and maybe some of them will be looking for zone changes uh, as well? Uh, and and, and I'm, I, I just fear that absent of a master plan from the developer, uh, which I thought we were eventually going to going to be getting something something of that sort uh, uh, for a master plan of development. And and if we're if we're going to piecemeal this thing, we we are opening ourselves up to uh, 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 zone changes for all, all the other parcels. Uh, you know, Macy's could come in with a. a that whole piece for a zone change as well. So, but all of that, and 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 again, I, I reread all, all of the, uh, the the meeting minutes from uh, uh, January sixteenth, and and went through all of that. I, I have a, a difficult time supporting this uh, uh, zone uh, change application. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Rich, did you want to add it? Yeah, you know, again, you know, I, I unfortunately I missed yes last week's meeting, and I, I did read the meeting minutes, and and I was following the direction that we want to go. And in terms of, you know, I also think, you know, one part of me says that, you know, obviously what we want to do is, is allow for variations and you know inclusion of of you know all kinds of possible businesses and and mixed use development so that. You know, and, and I think that, you know, we would encourage, you know, some kind of a homogeneous approach to the development of this area rather than, you know, divide it into these little discrete, you know, pieces and then have them all stand alone. And, and I guess, you know, looking at it, they're, they're still subject to the covenant that's, you know, in, in force with, with the actual larger parcel, but that, you know, I, I think that you know we, we need to have you know again some kind of a plan and and the plan doesn't appear to be there it, it seems to be disjointed and you know let's take the first thing that comes along rather than you know actually have a long range plan as to what we want to do so in, in that vein you know I, I also have 
some difficulty. You know, I recognize that we want to be versatile and we want to get, you know, different, you know, possibilities occurring there. Um, and that, you know, and, and not, I'm not saying that, you know, this particular, you know, use for, you know, adjacent to, you know, a, a gasoline station is not consistent with the gasoline station, but that, you know, if we had a, a plan that, you know, okay, you know, it, if this happens over here, we're going to develop this other area. And, and I know that we can't look at, you know, the other areas that are being developed, but, but, you know, I think that we, we have this gnawing, I, I guess, feeling in, in the back of our minds that, you know, th this is going to, you know, develop into something that is not going to be cohesive, that it's going to be, you know, all these discrete little p pieces and, and that it would be difficult to plan a, a major system or, you know, some kind of a major development that would make sense for, for what our long range vision is. And, and, and obviously we're developing, you know, our regulations at this time to, to sort of modify what we think that this, this area would like to be. And our POCD is also gonna sort of, you know, shed some light on that too. So in that vein, you know, I, I don't know that I would really like to see, you know, all these, you know, different things being proposed without having a good idea of what the big picture was. Thank you, Commissioner Suzak. Uh, Rich, you took the words out of my mouth. I have it written down. I, I think the owners of the mall have done a very poor job, including the town, in their master plan of what they want to do to this property. And unfortunately, Carl, I think that's falling back on you and your um, uh, your um, client. But um, without knowing what's happening with the big part of the mall, it's kind of hard to start determining what we're going to do around the edge of it. And for what we're losing and what we're gaining, I just don't see it beneficial to the town. I mean, liquor permits with entertainment. So um, a gentleman's club could, if the car wash falls apart or whatever you're putting there falls apart, it could technically be a gentleman's club. Open lot sales. You could have a little car dealership put there, you know, selling used cars. And, and I don't see that as fitting with the plan of conservation and development. And I, and I have to agree with so far all the other commissioners who have spoke. Um, but, but again, I think this is more, I think this is more, the commission being left in the dark of what they are planning to do with this property. You know, and I said it to you last week, Carl, or two weeks ago, I don't understand why they're not sitting next to you, you know, fighting for this with you, helping you deliver a, a vision for this property to make this work. I, I, it just blows my mind and I, it just, to me, it boils, boils down to, you know, break it up, cash in and get rid of it. And it seems like that's what they're doing with it. And without a master plan for the big parcel, I, I agree with them. Uh, Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. Um, commissioners, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I was there also at the meeting, but I also got the impression from them that with them selling this off, uh, everybody was gonna come in front of us. We knew at some point that it was gonna be someone or another coming in front of us with something like this. My only problem and fear is that this is what we're gonna get. We're going to get these guys coming in with different zone changes to put things in. And if we don't at least listen and try and figure it out, there's going to be nothing there. And it's going to be the same as it's always been. Um, I'm, I, I totally agree with you with the master plan, but I also can't keep thinking about the future. Anything can happen. You're right. It could be a, a it could be a car wash today, in a gentleman's club tomorrow. But do, do we know that? I mean, 
I don't I don't know. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable with it, but I'll be honest with you. I didn't feel comfortable with it when we first started last year with this whole thing, because I'll be honest with you. I knew this was going to happen because you know why they're not standing with him right now, sir, is because they'll just walk away because 10 million is nothing to them. So they don't care either way. That's my opinion. Thank you, Commissioner Grillo. Uh, Commissioner Alimo. Thank you. Um, is the email opinion that we received from our consultant going to be part of the record? Yes. Well, our, our consultant works for us. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm asking. We have not given them the vision. They haven't sat with the residents of Enfield to see what the vision that this town wants. I understand what Commissioner Grillo is saying, live for today, but this is our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren's future. We're living with Thompsonville because of our forefathers thinking about right then and there and look what they did to Thompsonville and it's going to take a hundred years and a lot of spot on decisions to try to bring Thompsonville back and you know what we're doing it right now with the center of Enfield the same thing and I'm not willing to piece it out until we have a master plan like Rich Suzak said that tells us exactly what their vision is because right now there is no vision, none. And a strip club is not an answer. An open car lot is not an answer. I think there's plenty of things in the zone right now that's allowed that would fit beautiful in there. So we don't need a zone change. So do I still have the Oh, Lord? sorry, Frank. Oh, that's okay. Cut you off. No, that's all right. Yeah. So I guess I asked a question um, about the email we received from our consultant. Is that going to be part of the record for this application? Yes, it will. Okay, so I mean we could read it in if you want. Okay, when I'm done, if you if you want, that's fine. So I think I made myself pretty clear what I wanted to see last meeting. You know, Trader Joe's Cheesecake Factory, um, Christmas tree shop. You know, that's where I was going. And this has been a tough one, but now I re we received an email from our consultant that we hired. And we're gonna ask residents of the town to get on a committee led by him to develop our new plan going forward. And his opinion relative to this application was very, very strong. And that's our consultant who's doing our PCOD next who is working right now so when i seen that email i read it thoroughly and and i gotta tell you i'm a little stuck here uh lori staff if you could you know read that into the record because like i said i made myself clear i mean i want to see something else there but this is our guy so before i go any further lori if you would want to read his email into the record i would appreciate that he's not a resident of the town frank he, he, he's to listen to our vision, which he hasn't heard yet. He's a consultant for us. We're not a consultant for him. We're not doing what he wants. He's doing what we want. And he doesn't know what we want yet. He's going through our current regulations, looking for the errors. He hasn't sat down with one farmer, one business owner, one commissioner, one town council member. He hasn't. So he doesn't know what our vision is. So his opinion is irrelevant at this point. He don't know what we want to do with the mall. Do so you? Why did we receive an opinion from him that somebody that the town employs? Because relative somebody, to this application? Somebody, somebody asked for it. Somebody asked that we reach out and ask him right. his opinion. Right. But have, you opinion. Given, have you given him direction as to what our opinion, because it's not his opinion, it's ours. It's the farmers in town, the business owners in town, the residents in town. Uh, you, you know, they're the ones who put it all together and form an opinion on how they want the town to move forward. He doesn't have that yet. Right. So, like I said, I made myself pretty clear last meeting what I would like to see there. Which but everything this... you would like to see is allowed. Right. So, and then right now. 
in light of our consultant sending this email and us getting it, it just made me pause. It really did. Because here's a guy we're depending on. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, how does it really look? We were hiring this guy. You guys interviewed him. You brought him on board. We're hiring him to make our plan for the next 10 years. And he writes a strong opinion. I think, you know, I, I just want to talk about that. And I want staff to talk about it. I need it explained. I, I want the opinion explained. Because we got it in an email and it's nowhere in this conversation. So Laurie, if you would, through the chair, I would feel comfortable if that gets read into the record. Mr. Chairman, if you would allow it, I don't know if you guys want to hear it. Mr. Chair, would can I read it into the record? That's up to the commission. You heard my my opinion on it. Go ahead, Commissioner Suzak. You know, I, I agree in terms of, you know, the discussions that we've had with our consultant to date lead me to believe that he's looking at this thing from, a you know, just a regulatory type of involvement. He's not necessarily looking at it from the fact that, you know, we, we have a vision or we, we want a plan. He's looking at it and saying, geez, from a regulatory you know, viewpoint, there is no reason why we can't do this. And I totally agree with that from a regulatory viewpoint. You know, it, it's, it's such a minor, you know, difference between, you know, business regional and business general that, you know, it, you know, if, if you're just looking at, you know, if, if you're a bean counter, and you don't care about anything else and you're just counting beans, that the beans don't make any difference realistically. A, but but the vision is not there when you're thinking. So, so what we're saying is that you know we have a vision, and 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 maybe the car wash is the right fit, but but we don't know what the vision is. So you know so we're saying that you know if we knew what the vision was, then it would be easier for us to to count the beans and and figure out whether the beans make any sense or not. But at this point, you know we. we Sort of, you know, have, you know, a, again, a, a zone that allows a lot of things. It doesn't exclude a lot of things. It allows a lot of things, and 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 it, and you know, it's just not consistent with what the original intent for that parcel was. So again, you know, I th I think that, you know, he's he's not and he's not as involved into the the big picture yet. All he knows is that. You know, from a regulatory viewpoint, you're adding two or three or four more little things that you could do in a zone, but but that shouldn't be a big deal because you know that there's there's other zones that are just like this in in the vicinity, but but you know that they might be across the street, and and across the street is, is not part of this parcel, which is the, the again the the bigger picture of what we're trying to look at or what we're trying to get a feel for what we're going to get. Commissioner Higley, your hands up. Sorry, I forgot to put it down. I'll do that right now. So Rich interprets it the same way that I do, Commissioner Alimo. That's relative to the legal, not the legal opinion, the opinion from our consultant. Is that what you mean? Well, he doesn't have a vision yet. So, I mean, the, the original plan of conservation that we're working on right now has a vision. This isn't part of it. The new plan that we're drawing up isn't created yet, and there's not even a vision to move forward. The mall has not bring, um, brought forward a vision to us to let us know what they're planning on doing. I mean, multifamily, mixed use, what bulldozed the whole thing. Nobody knows. So we allow little bits and pieces to go and we change zones to fit every little thing. And then next thing you know, the big picture can't be done because it's been picked away at. Those beans Rich talks about rolled away. So I mean, I understand his opinion with, with the zone change, but Rich is right. It's, it's not our vision because he doesn't have our vision yet. He is hired to listen to us to create our vision, not his. 
So is Lori going to put that into the record? I'm saying no. And Rich, if I'm correct, read it. He, it's not a vision that he gave us. So if you want yeah, to push you know, this. When I read it, and unfortunately, you know, I, I read it. We just got it this afternoon. So I, I wasn't able to print it out. And, and you know, so I, I just, I don't have it in front of me right now. But, but that, you know, when I read it, you know, to me, it, it seems that, you know, he was just indicating that, you, you know, the, the zones are so much alike that, you know, it really shouldn't make any difference. And, but, but the difference is that the present zone had a vision associated with it. So th that's the reason why the zone is there because of the vision associated with the original concept for this entire parcel. And that, you know, if, if you're, like you said, if you're just counting beans, the beans don't mean anything, you know, but if you have, if you're looking at the, the vision then all of a sudden, you know, the, the beans all just go away and, and, and it does mean something. So I, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we, we hire him for his opinion and, and I totally agree with his opinion. With, with if, if you don't have a vision, you know, that's the opinion that I would have for sure. So, but, but you know, but I have a vision and I'm just trying to figure out where that everything is going associated with that vision. And, and I don't have a clear understanding of, of what's happening. Commissioner DeGray. I agree with both you and uh, Rich about this. It was just his opinion. Um, he gave us some insight of an like a, an overview of the area, but it's just a personal opinion at this point. It's not a town opinion. It's not the Enfield people's thought. It's just his personal view. It's like, Frank, if I were to say to you, should I put a fire extinguisher near my uh, stove? And you say, yes, I think that would be a good idea. It's your opinion. You, you're not mandating anything. You're just giving me your thoughts. And that's what we got is his thoughts on it. That's all. Thank you. One more. Commissioner Petronella, where do you stand on this? Well, uh, I, I, I certainly ag uh, agree with, as, as I made statements before, uh, but uh, uh, as far as our consultant is concerned, um, I, I certainly don't want him speaking for me. Uh, I, I'm not sure why we consulted him. I, I do recall that somebody requested his input, but uh, uh, I, I don't agree with uh, uh, trying to uh, have a, a consultant's opinion sway our votes. Uh, uh, we speak for ourselves. We're, we're our own body. He doesn't have a vote. We have the vote. And, and I'm not going to let an outside consultant uh, uh, in, influence my, uh, uh, my, my opinion on uh, how, how I'm going to vote on this. Thank you, John. So there's four against it, Frank. So we are not reading into the record. I mean, like I said, all along, we're a commission. I'm not a chairman. We're in this together. So four members, that's enough. We're not reading it into the record. His opinion was taken, um, but we're not doing it. So, Mr. Um, Chairman, I, ju yes. I just want to clarify: it was requested, and it was received and sent out to the commission for this application. So it becomes part of the record, but we don't right. have to, we don't right. have to read yep. it in. Absolutely, I totally I, understand. I just want that. to clarify yes. that. Yes. Yeah. He wants it read into the record. We're not reading it into the record. So it's in the record. Um, so at this point, I think all the commissioners have spoke. Commissioner Higley, did you want to speak again? Your hands up. No. Okay. I'm, I just want to make sure before I open this to the public, um, Carl, did you want to say anything before I open it up to the public? If I may? Yes. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, respectfully, I, I, I disagree with some of the comments, um, not the vision part. I mean, obviously, that's part of your 
your, your function as a planning commission. Um, I don't see how, you know, the malls open certain days and hours. I, I don't know how, you know, having control over the days and hours of a car wash, for example, would, would uh, matter. But um, let's talk bigger picture for a second. I, I uh, have sat in your seats and, and I, I know about, uh, you know, a vision for a town and um, I've worked with towns on, on, on visions and visions are great, but I can tell you in where I live now, we've had a vision for a certain area for 20 years. And it, it, it's a nice vision, but it's not a practical vision. Um, and it's never been implemented and it's probably never going to be. So at some point, yeah, and, and maybe I'd like it to be with this application, obviously, but at some point, um, you're gonna have to decide whether the vision is more important than the practical aspects. Um, if someone comes in with an application that doesn't require a zone change, all right, you're probably going to have to approve that depending on the nature of the application, whether it's a site plan or a special permit, whether it meets your vision or not. And I, I wish I had, you know, believe me, I wish I had a representative from the owner here with me. I don't. And, and that's just the, the, you know, the context in which we had to bring this application. I don't know what their vision is. I, I really don't. Um, and, but I can tell you that if something happens to Target, we can forget about anyone's vision. I don't think there's going to be anything left there um, except a, a huge white elephant. I would think that any development in this area that put a few bucks, and I know it's a, you know, hopefully the developer would or the owner would put that back into the mall, the money they'd be making from this, and, and then work with you guys trying to create a vision. But, no, I don't have any authority beyond beyond this one little parcel here. Um, so I guess that would be my my final comment. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Okay, at this time, I'm going to open it up to the public. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 2991 for the re rezoning of a particular parcel? I'm sorry, 2993 for a zone change application from business regional to business general. Um, and I'm not even gonna say what it allows because it doesn't really, it allows other things. If there's anybody who would like to speak in favor or against, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, uh, Mike, can you hear me, Carl? Yeah. Ken, uh, Ken this is Alan Tracy. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, can, I have your, can I have your address, please? Yes, it's one bridge lane infield. And I do, I am against this, and I have something I would like to share. Go um, ahead, sir. Okay, I'm registering my opposition to this applicant's request for the zone change that is before you. And to illustrate my uh, reasoning, I want to go back a bit to the redevelopment in the 70s, the urban renewal in the Thompsonville section and part of Enfield Street. That whole thing began, of course, because of the change of the mill and it going out. And then, uh, as so uh, as so often happens, money was thrown at that problem, and small businesses and homes were displaced along Enfield Street and North Main Street. And further, there was a push to expand on the north side of Main Street, almost up to the town hall. Now, m most of you probably don't remember this, but I do. And some of the those in power at the time, however, stopped. They took a look back and said no to commercial development north of Main Street. The result is we have a beautiful town green that all citizens enjoy. But there was a push to commercialize that. But thank God they didn't do it. And why did this happen? Was this uh, why was this urban renewal successful? Well, uh, some might say it was, but uh, I think the feeling was that something had to be done. And so we got to do it. And I'm of the opinion that the taking of those properties in the long run had minimal positive results. You mentioned a little earlier, Ken, about the fact that there's still a lot of work to do in the Thompsonville section. 
On the other hand, those that saw the future, the need for a common area that all can enjoy made the right call. I doubt that any of us would disagree. So this history lesson that I'm bringing to you brings me to why I think that this zone change should be denied. And for full disclosure, before I continue, as most of you know, my family is in the car wash business and thus there is no doubt that it will be a, effective by the ultimate outcome. However, I've also, my family has been part of this community since 1965 when we bought our first house. We have invested in this town, have supported many charities since we started, but it's much more than that. I watched the previous meeting when the application was discussed. And I'm of the opinion that many on this board have reservation about this zone change request. And I thought I heard it loud and clear tonight. When this commission allowed the mall owners to create more lots, I think that attempt to help the investors was done with the implicit idea that the overall vision for this property would remain just that. As someone said, the idea of a zone change request for each plot was probably not what the commission wants to happen. The zoning regulations for the mall is, I believe, business regional. That zoning designation is there for a reason. The commission and in, and in effect, the citizens of Enfield feel that this is the correct zone. This asset is a great property that will see development that will benefit everyone. I hope, it is my hope, the commission will not allow expediency to cloud the greater vision that one can see in the future. That's my, that's my comment. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, yes. Mary Ann Turner. Your address? Seven Meadow Road, Enfield, Connecticut. Go I'm ahead. Here, I'm here this evening to speak, speak against this zone change. Um, I have to be honest, the previous um, speaker kind of hit on some of my points, and most of it starts as what is in it for Enfield. In 1970-ish, when they did the urban renewal, I just got done testifying about a zoning problem that's coming our way out of the legislature. And this is just one of those things we need to be extremely careful about. When we had the mall built in the 70s, there was some vision from the folks that were on at that time. But right now, we're at a different, we're at a different place. And as Commissioner Suzak has said at different meetings that I've attended with him, we need to be very careful. And I don't mean to put words in the commissioner's mouth. This is my words, but he, has mentioned before that we should be cognizant of the future and what may come our way. And uh, the thing is, as I'm looking at this zone change, it does nothing for Enfield. There's no betterment here to change this thing. And you're absolutely right. There are many opportunities that can go on that property right now as a BL zone without having it to go to BG zone. I did spend some time today looking back at the history and, uh, and I understand why that one piece became a BG zone. But I, don't, I do believe that you have the rest of your lives, plus your children's lives, because God's not making any more dirt, that this property could end up being a terrible spot, maybe a truck stop. I saw where you went with it, Commissioner um, Nelson. But truthfully, that is a very large area. And once you take those concrete buildings down, that's a big open lot of 70 acres. And, I, and if you change it now in, this, in these little bits and pieces, which we are being pushed to do, which really offends me as a member of this community, because we were told two Decembers ago that you had to go and change this property and break it into different zoning groups. And we were told we had to do it because there was a large build uh, property that was coming, another big box store. It's not here. Haven't seen it. And now the target has been sold for 8.8 .8 million. So that place is probably not going anywhere very soon. So I'm just against this. And as for the master plan, we spend the time to be on it and I was on the last one. And as we all know that uh, plan of conservation isn't, is, isn't always, it may be taken into consideration and then it's put aside. 
And we've had it happen many times when people have come to us in Enfield and said, well, it may be that you can put this here even if the plan of conversation, com conservation doesn't agree with it. And we've had that happen. So I am asking you to please deny this at this time. It's not for the good of Enfield. And, um, and I guess I would like to see what the mall's big picture is and have them actually tell us instead of just coming in one little bite at a time. We need to have a bigger, bigger plan. And the car wash is not it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else speaking in favor or against public hearing 2993? If so, state your name and address for the record going for the first time. Going for the second time. And going for the third time, public hearing 2993, Zero Elm Street, a change of zone from business regional to business general. Seeing none. Okay, commissioners, how do you want to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we close public hearing. Uh, 2993. Second. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Sorry. Four. John Petronella. Four. Vinnie Grillo. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. Okay, all in favor of closing the public hearing, how would you guys like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve public hearing 21, 2993, um, as indicated in the staff uh, report dated 228, February 28th, our, our last meeting. Um, and it, it lists two conditions, I believe. Motions made, is there a second? Second. Second. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner Grillo. Uh, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Against. Linda DeGray. Against. Virginia Higley. Against. Frank Alimo. Against. John Petronella. Against. Vinny Grillo. Against. And Richard Suzak is against. Uh, none in favor, all against. Um, the application fails. Uh, and again, Carl, I apologize, but um, I, think, I think somebody needs to sit down with the mall owner and create a vision so the next guy doesn't come alone like you just did. And, you know, I, no I know problem. you. Thanks for your time. I have a student <laughs> on all the time. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Good evening. Yep. All right, moving on. Uh, public hearing 2991 95 Elm Street. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Here. Um, Linda DeGray. Here. Virginia, Virginia Higley. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. And Vinnie Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And, and I'll just, just to, as for the legal notice, um, the town of the Danfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at its next meeting on March 11th, 2021, regarding public hearing 2191, 95 Elm Street special permit and site plan review application for a permanent outdoor plan. Daddy associated with Chicago Sam's KIOP and field LP owner Bill Frag Fog. I'm gonna butcher this name. Frag many applicant map 43 lot one BR zone. That's it. Thank you, Rich. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. No one? 
Lori, Jen. I did send the um, application information to the applicant, so um, I'm not sure why they aren't here. Um, Lori, if you could, um, could it possibly be the phone number that's muted? I know sometimes people have difficulty um, unmuting. I'm here. I was muted, I guess. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? I'm yes. sorry. This is Phil Pregamy. I'm the uh, applicant. Okay. And your address, Phil? Uh, yes, sir. 61 Rugby Road in Speeding Hills, Massachusetts. All right. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about what you want to do. Sure. Um, basically, keep my business open. <laughs> um, no pun intended there, but I uh, basically would like to convert a uh, temporary dining space that we were approved through the uh, governor's executive order into a uh, permanent uh, outdoor dining space for the restaurant. Okay. And are you expanding what is currently there? Uh, there would be no expansion. We'd be looking to just work with the landlord uh, who's in full support of it uh, to just expand and take over the temporary space we set up last year when uh, COVID occurred. Okay. Commissioners? I'm just going to take the phone off speaker. I have an echo. Sorry. Hopefully I don't hang it up. All right. Commissioner DeGray. Um, Hello. I, I did take a ride over to the area and I did have a concern and I like dining outside and I like your restaurant so please don't take offense to this but no, no um, I had some concerns about people walking um, going from around your um, your dining area and walking out into the roadway. And that kind of bothered me, especially if they were walking with children. I know that big uh, Best Buy closed, but something will go there. And if they're going from one end of that strip mall to the other, and then they have to walk out into that roadway, that was a concern. And you're saying that you're gonna put a metal fence um, I don't know if you're, I see from my diagram, what I can see of it, that you're only going to put in three bollards. Um, I would hate to think that uh, you're sitting there and a car goes through that metal fence. Um, so those were my concerns is the walking out into the roadway. Um, there's nothing there that says this is a walkway. I don't know, there's no real plan here. It's just a tiny thing. But um, if you could expand on that, that would be helpful right now. I know with COVID, there's not a, as much traffic, but if once this one craziness is over and life is back to what it is, it was, I've seen that point in my phone. I don't, I don't dispute any of that. I agree with you. The parking lot uh, can get pretty crowded. Um, there is several vacancies in this plaza. I'm not saying they're going to be permanent, but, um, as far as walking traffic, I, I don't think it's, um, uh, substantial. I'm not saying that there's none. Um, there certainly is on occasion. Um, I did note to building and fire that we would be willing to, you know, adjust the table layout if need be to keep the sidewalk completely open, um, and just have the, the dining area closer to the, uh, parking lot where there would be substantial walking uh, room for foot traffic. Um, as far as the, the ballards in the drawing, that might have been what's currently there. Um, again, we'd be willing to do, you know, whatever deemed necessary for enclosure purposes, um, safety-wise. Uh, I believe there was a few removed and never replaced by the landlord. I don't, I don't know why. Um, as far as the fence, um, that was. Uh, requirement in place of the concrete jersey barriers which are temporary they wanted the aesthetics to look more um, like an actual patio space I don't know if that helps but this process is all new to me as well so I apologize no thank you but um, I guess I'm 
the, the safety of the um, fence, we, we really don't know what kind of fence we're talking about. Is it like... Um, I thought I put in the report, it was to be a black aluminum fence, um, yeah, and then it would have the safety bollards around it uh, on the corners and so forth. Okay, all right. Most of the traffic here, I mean, just spending seven days a week here, it's it's people park and they, you know, they designate to the store they're going to. Like I said, I mean, passing foot traffic is very minimal. I'll I say, commit. I'm, I'm done. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. Sir, I guess the only problem I... I also had, I also agree with um, Commissioner DeGray. We have to have some kind of a walkway. Um, you say you're there seven uh, days a week. I understand. I, I also am there a little bit. Uh, have you ever been there on the 4th of July um, when the town green uh, has its little festival out front by any chance? I've been involved five years here, so yes. All right, awesome. All right, so you know that that parking lot is now completely full. My concern is I don't think you have enough table space and still have a walkway underneath that without going into the roadway. I don't think you have enough, you have enough uh, room there. It, it, if you were able to keep that walkway in the front so someone would not have to walk off the curb and walk around it. I think that would make me feel a lot better right there. That, that, that's I, my really big concern right there is to keep them on the sidewalk. Cause I do know that you're right. It's not always busy there, but it gets busy there. It, it does, it has its offs and ons. And I understand the store down is closed but I, I don't see that being empty either. I, I would be happy to stay with the exact setup I had temporarily. Um, I thought I was, uh, you know, making it better by pushing it back onto the sidewalk, but I can certainly stay exactly where I am. I know I have enough room no, uh, I'm per the fire and stay. police department. I, I'm what sorry? I'm it would be better to stay off so that somebody, they can walk from one store to the other, like Mrs. DeGray, uh, DeGray was saying, without walking out into the walking area. Correct, which is I could stay exactly how I'm set up temporarily. There are no tables on the sidewalk with the temporary dining. Okay. Thank you, that's it, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Grillo. Commissioner Higley. You're muted, Jenny. Sorry, I was over at the plaza yesterday and I was driving from Coles towards Best Buy. And I was just about where Chicago Sam's is. And someone had walked, was walking around it as a car was coming at me. And they, the people walking weren't paying attention to where they were going. And um, it was, it, it kind of opened my eyes to what could happen. And again, I'm sure that not 20 million people a day walk there, but it only takes one person, one person. and one distracted driver, and then, then we have an accident. Also, uh, I think it might enc encroach on the fire lane. I don't want to take away from anything that Chicago Sam's has for patio for the COVID crisis. I think anything we can do for any restaurant during the COVID crisis is our duty but I would like to see it as a temporary thing that goes away. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Higley. Commissioner Suzak. Again, you know, I'm in favor with the, of this outdoor dining and I think I, I have to voice some, you know, reservation as to, you know, looking at the plan and, you know, the, the safety of, the, you know, that the people are actually dining there. and. And, and actually, when, when I read the, you know, the narrative, and, you know, I, I, I believe that the Jersey barriers are, are significantly safer than, you know, the, the little metal fence. And, and, you know, although the little metal fence might be more aesthetically pleasing, you know, in, in another situation, but in, in this particular situation, I, I, I would opt towards being, you know, more safety conscious than, 
you know, aesthetic requirements, you know, recognizing that, you know, we, we want to promote outdoor dining, we want to promote, you know, our, our local restaurants, and we want to make them thrive and, you know, as, as much as possible. Um, and I, I guess if there's something there now that, that ain't broke, you know, why fix it? And you know, especially if, if it's, you know, meets the, the safety requirements for the most part of, you know, what we're trying to achieve. So, um, I, I, again, you know, I, I don't want to add any more additional expense to, to what you're doing and, and possibly, you know, if, if it can remain, you know, somewhat consistent with what you have with some modifications that would enhance, you know, your, your actual utilage of, of the space, then, you know, that would be, you know, a, a bonus, but you know, I, again, I, I think that you know, we need to address the safety concern. So, I, and as long as we do that, I'm, I'm I'm all for this project for sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner Suzak. Commissioner Alimo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the staff. I'm looking at the reports from the staff, town staff, and under police department, it's the sentences, no comments or concerns at this time. So the I'm a little confused. Did they have, if there's no comments, how do they have no concerns? Did you get, did they actually talk to you guys? That's that, a little confusing. That was straight from their email, copy and pasted. We just okay. what their response was. They so their comment, a... their comment is they have no concerns. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyone else? Rich, did you want to speak again? No, I, I just, um, if I could, uh, Mr. Nelson, sure. If, if I could just clarify a couple things, I was just going to um, ask you to speak, Scott. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, thank go you. Ahead. Uh, a couple particular concerns. Um, I have, uh, the site plan brought up on my other laptop. Um, I've been working, uh, myself and the building official have been working pretty close over the last couple months, just trying to help him along and give him some direction, the applicant. Um, and he's been exceptionally receptive to our suggestions. Uh, as far as the fire lane uh, concern, um, some points of note with that particular plaza is that the fire lane shrinks to the mandated 24 feet. And I shouldn't so much say as fire lane, but access road. It just gets a little technical within, the, within um, part three of the code and part five. but um, in front of, uh, Chicago Sam's now it expands and it's a little over 30 feet, whereas the requirement is 24. So how he already has, it's actually a little bit more than that. What is on the plan still shows, uh, 30 feet from the, uh, parking lot or the, uh, the plantings of the parking lot to the frontage of where he would have his bollards and fence. So that still leaves him six feet, give or take a little bit um, for room to play. So if there were to be, uh, you know, if, if the property owners were okay with it, um, if he were to move out a little bit more, if you were to um, look at having the pedestrian walkway in front of where his seating area was, and then protective bollards um, beyond that, you know, giving the, the pedestrians the protection as they walk along. Again, from the fire department standpoint, the access and fire lane is larger than it needs to be. And actually in front of coals, it shrinks up. So if you look down going wow. from west to east on the plaza, you'll notice that where Coles is, it, their frontage, their sidewalk is actually bumped further out into that fire lane or fire department access. So to be clear, he, the applicant has uh, a bit of room to play there too. So to provide what some of the concerns were, uh, Ms. Higley and whatnot with A, encroaching on the fire lane, which he wouldn't be, and then also offering a, you know, a, a uh, a walkway of protection, either by keeping it close to his storefront and simply moving his uh, serving area out a little bit or having a protected walkway in front 
where they, the, the walkers, the pedestrians, would still be behind the um, protective bollards, right? Which again, is, as the applicant said, this planning, you know, he can absolutely sink more bollards in place to where, you know, they would be reflective of the um, Jersey type barriers, but without the negative impact to aesthetics. So, and again, he's also been, and I have it uh, in an email, we just conversed back with um, very understanding of the possibility of requirement for a dry sprinkler system underneath there. Everything that has been asked um, that we've talked about, the applicant has been exceptionally um, responsive to fire and building with. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Um, the, the only concerns that I have is the way it's jutting out into the parking lot like that. I understand the aesthetics of the fence, which I would agree with. But I just don't like how a car is coming down along the sidewalk and then all of a sudden you're jutted out. There is no um, de any way to detour the car away from that. So if a, even if a car is doing 15 miles an hour and they hit that fence dead on, they're taking out the first, if not the second table. Um, if, if you could create some sort of a diversion you know, maybe Jersey barriers on an angle where the lines are on the beginning of the end and the end, you know, a Jersey barrier, soon as somebody hits that, they're going to know something's wrong instead of having two feet in a table and taking out a little aluminum fence. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And would you have an issue doing that? I don't have an issue with anything. Um, what I can confidently say, if, if this matters, is we operated all last season without zero incident. Um, you know, it was completely safe and certainly helped keep the business going. So, uh, I, you know, I, I appreciate Captain Ellis's input. Um, and I, I would certainly make adjustments to the plans if need be um, just to get this accomplished. Right. I understand. But we can't, and, and I don't want to, cross over COVID to this plan because this plan is the farthest thing from COVID there is because the tables are right on top of each other. So well that was drawn with the intent of COVID being gone. Nobody knew I started this back in the winter time. Um, right. you know nobody knew I guess at the time how long this was gonna last. So um okay. obviously social distancing would still apply um you know right. in a permanent it, it, setting. That was just more or less uh and I am looking at permanent things and you know, I, I love it. I love outdoor dining. I mean, you've got some competition in town. Chicago Sam's yep. is definitely, definitely one of the best partners this town has. You guys do a lot for the community. And um, I want to help you any way I can. I, I just, Thank you. I don't like the way that aluminum fence is jutting right out into the parking lot. And don't take offense, but you serve alcohol to people who are walking into the parking lot, getting in their cars. And my father was killed by a drunk driver. So, you know, I got to err on the side of caution. And, you know, with a heavy Jersey barrier right there, it may deflect the car away from the tables and save somebody's life. And if, if you were willing to do that on both ends, and it doesn't have to be a Jersey barrier, you know, you could do ballards working their way out to the corner. Anything you see that you think is more appealing uh, to the customer, but is definitely stronger enough to hold back a 3,000 pound car at, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour. I'm not saying 100. I, I, I think aesthetically the corners of the fence, if that's what's approved, could be wrapped um, with the ballards with no problem. I don't, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do that. Because I don't think one Ballard is going to stop my truck, you know, which is 6,000 pounds at, you know, 15 miles an hour before it takes out that corner table. And that's what I'm worried about. You know, if, if it was, you know, on an angle, I would start wrecking my truck before I was 10 feet away from that table. And then it would start diverting me out into the parking lot before I even got near the table. You know, it would deflect me away from that table. 
one Ballard in the ground. I've seen Ballards hit at gas stations all the time. You know, the Pride Station, the lady went right up over the Ballard, right through the front of the store. So that would be my concern. That's all. Uh, Commissioner Petronella. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, in, in looking at the report from the uh, the police department, as as uh, Commissioner Limo says, uh, it states no comments or concerns at this time. Uh, I'm I'm a little concerned about that. That uh, the traffic safety officer wouldn't wouldn't point out uh, a, a, a safety concern with 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 this particular design. I, 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 as as the other commissioner said, I, I, I'm for it. Uh, but I do have the concerns over safety, and and, and I think uh, one one possibility, and I, I don't mean to uh, to to try to, uh, uh, to to design it, but the, a suggestion might be is to get one of those uh, big precast type of pot uh, pots where where you could put a tree in it. They're about four or five foot diameter, or or they're squares or rectangular, whatever they may be, where you can put those on either end of where it jets out, and you could actually plant a tree uh, in there. So uh, and 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 filled with earth and and the weight of the concrete, they're very heavy. Uh, uh, they would act as a as a jersey barrier, if you will, but it'd be very decorative. Um, I would also like to see in 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 front along the front of the uh, uh, the fencing area if if it could be painted cross hash uh, or hashed out with with a, a traffic paint uh, for for a walkway uh, it'd be very noticeable uh, as well uh, and it'd be out six feet as um, uh, Captain Ellis had said uh, th that that would give them enough room it would it would uh, downsize the uh, uh, the roadway to 24 feet which would still meet his concern. Uh, and maybe suggesting moving the bollards out to the end of the walkway as well, or maybe have a, have a double row of uh, several bollards along the fence and then several out six feet to kind of designate a walkway. Uh, um, you know, th those are those are things that I think would, would really, uh, it, it would en enhance it and, and make it, uh, I think it it'd solve all, all the safety concerns as well. Uh, again, okay. just a suggestion. So and as best if I understand, create a walkway with ballards for pedestrian traffic along the fence. Yeah, if if uh, you're showing several ballards uh, or, or bollards out, uh, along the fence line now, I think I'm counting one, two, three, uh, four, five, possibly. And if you left those there and put another five out six feet, okay, and then in between that six feet. You you would get traffic paint and 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 hash it out like like a crosswalk, uh, in the right. road, and and then that kind of uh, designates it as a walkway, uh, um, and and it kind of just uh, in, intensifies it as well. I understand. Again, just, I can I can vision that. Yeah, just a suggestion. Um, uh, but I, I think safety is, is the paramount thing here. Uh, I mean, other than that, uh, again, I I have no issue with the. Uh, with, with what you're trying to do. I, I just think it, it lacks uh, safety. Thank you, Commissioner Petronella. I actually agree with you, John. I think the trees would look a lot better than some sort of a Jersey barrier that I was suggesting. And I think if they're spaced a little away from that corner, they would do the same amount of damage before it actually hit the table. Mm -hmm. um, good idea. Uh, before I get to Vinny, one question for staff is, I'm almost positive our regulations state that if there's outdoor dining with alcohol, you can exit only from the fenced area. Am I correct? I put the, um, the regulations um, for outdoor dining in the staff report. I don't believe that actually is part of it, but I think that might be part of the state requirement um, when a liquor license is allowed to be outside um, or like for a part of an outdoor dining patio. Um, but that, I don't believe that that's, that's not in our regulations. Um, but I, I have heard, I have heard that as well. So that's why I think it is with the state liquor commission that that is a requirement. Right. Cause we address that with a place down the street and then Panera bread 
that was one of the things they were going to deny them on. And then I clarified that it was alcohol. And I believe one of you read the regulations where it said serving alcohol, al um, yeah, serving alcohol. So uh, I think we need to check into that because they don't have exit only, whether it's a local or a state. Um, not that I'm against this, but we got to make sure it meets the regulation or we have to change the regulation to make it meet. Yeah, um, again, I did, um, I copy and pasted straight from the regulations, the requirements um, into the staff report. And I don't see anything that requires uh, or that even mentions uh, liquor permits for the outdoor dining patios actually. Um, I don't know. Uh, we can certainly uh, look into that. I, or maybe if, if Lori or I see Rick's still on, um, if they know better about that. Um, but I, I didn't see it in our local regulations. Oh, okay, if it's not there, it's not, I'm okay with it. If it's not there, I just don't want to break one of our own regulations. And Lori or Rick, do you know? I, I'm unaware of that. I don't recall seeing it. You remember the discussion with Panera Bread when they were talking about that? Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, if I, if I may. Uh, I believe under the, he has to also get a uh, permanent uh, expanded permit for outside uh, liquor. Right now under COVID, it's not required, but uh, under normal circumstances, there is a permit through the Liquor Commission that allows for an outside uh, dining area to serve alcohol. And I believe it's part of that through the uh, Liquor Commission's regulations that require an exit. Okay. All right. Just to interject, I already uh, had submitted that application to the Liquor Control Commission. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I just wanna make sure we're not, you know, crossing one of our own regulations. So, um, Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. And I just wanted to say that I am definitely behind this, that it's, it's the safety issues. Um, if they're taken care of, and then I'm definitely okay with this. But if I'm not mistaken, just to go back on what he just said, um, and what you just said about that uh, area, if, it, if I'm not mistaken, with the drinking area, even though he's going to have his balusters, I think he still has to have it fenced in with a gate on it, but not almost kind of, let me put, uh, I, I wanna say lose, but, but not, but I think he still has to have it fenced in. I know we're talking, I know what you're saying about the, but for just because it's alcohol, they, I think this, it, it will be a statement that he has to have it still fenced in somehow. So I don't know how that's going to work with the balusters in the room. I, actually, I still think he has plenty of room. I, um, Scott, thank you. I didn't realize he had uh, six feet extra, uh, which I, I didn't realize that, which, which is definitely huge uh, for him for, for pedestrian walking. But I, I think he still has to have a fence around it with one exit gate if he's serving alcohol out there. And, I'm not 100%, but I, I really do think so. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Grillo. Anybody else before I open it to the public? Phil, would you like to add anything before I open it to the public? I think right now I'm, I'm good. I mean, I appreciate everybody's input. I kind of understand the, the main presence here is just to reconfigure the drawing um, and make it more conducive safety-wise for pedestrian traffic. Yeah, I mean, my only concern was that is you don't obstruct the pedestrian traffic along the front of the mall. So if the Liquor Commission requires you to fence that in, I don't know what you're going to do. But I, I just can't allow it to be fenced off to the front of the uh, Chicago Sam's. And then just to address the two corners. Um, other than that, I'm OK with it. So um, I'm going to open it to the public. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 2991 95 Elm Street, special permit and site plan review 
for a permanent outdoor dining and patio area, area associated with Chicago Sam's? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Going for the first time. Going for the second time. Public hearing 2991, 95 Elm Street. And going for the third time. Seeing none, how do you guys wanna proceed? Rich? Mr. Chair, you know, I guess from, from the discussion that we have, you know, you know, I'm, I'm believing that, you know, the, this proposed, this application has a lot of, you know, positive energy and has a lot of support from the planning commission. And, and I think that, you know, if we added some site specific conditions, at least two, um, address our concerns and that they would have to, you know, comply with their final, you know, I guess application to the building department with our, you know, our site specific re requirements, then I would be fine, you know, going forward with this application. And, and I guess the additional site specific conditions that I would suggest is that one, you know, we address the safety of the patrons who are utilizing the space. Two, we address, you know, the pedestrian traffic that it's continuous and uh, the, the safety of the pedestrians that are going to be possibly crossing this, this area. And, you know, I, I'm not sure that we necessarily need to address, you know, the fact that they, they conform with the Liquor Commission requirements of, you know, whatever that might be. And so, you know, with that said, you know, I'm, if, if everybody's comfortable adding some additional site specific conditions, we could sort of move this forward and, and without designing it for him, you know, obviously it would be up to him to design it. And, 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 and again, you know, I, everybody was offering, you know, ways of designing it. And, you know, if it does have to be a fenced in enclosure because they're serving liquor, you know, possibly what, what happens is, is that the pedestrian traffic goes out in front of that, um, I guess patio, outdoor patio, with with again a protective, you know, jersey barrier or you know a, a series of bollards that that sort of indicate you know some kind of a path for the pedestrians to travel. So um, I'm not sure what the rest of the commissioners might think about that. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, not to be out of line, but just to clarify. Um, as this project sits now, there wouldn't be anything driving uh, a building permit for any of this. So the only possibility where the building department would be involved as a regulatory partner with, with fire and, and with zoning um, would be for application of uh, the fire protection permit to extend a dry or antifreeze style sprinkler system out to the uh, awning. Um, that would obviously drive a building permit um, and involve Ray and his staff. But beyond that, there wouldn't be any application for a building permit based on what's going on now. Just, just to be clear. So is it, is it a code, Scott, that they have to put sprinklers outside? So if you look, um, uh, take Home Depot, uh, Brookside mm -hmm. Plaza, um, places where they want to now, how the code draws you that way is when you want to extend the use of a sprinkler building, a sprinkler occupancy, and now extend it to another covered area, covered area, use it for that use. And this would be extending an assembly use out onto the sidewalk where it would be an assembly use extension of the building of the structure. Then yes, uh, NFPA 13, which we get to through with this, it would be through um, part four of the, the fire code, which is existing. And it would drive that you have to now extend that required fire suppression system out to that covered area that you're now using as an assembly. That's how 
uh, Home Depot can have product for sale out underneath their awning because it's sprinklered. That's why Brookside Plaza, when they have um, sidewalk sales, et cetera, they can do that or they can put product out there. And that's unfortunately why when I've received citizen complaints, um, Tractor Supply has to take their sawdust and pellets and Big Y has to take their bags, you know, uh, stacks of uh, wood pellets and whatnot and move them elsewhere. So. Right. Okay. So would you be all right if we just, we made it a condition of approval that um, proper um, fire permits, because I mean, normally we don't get involved in this, but I understand what you're saying. If it wouldn't be a permitted use, see, this is why we normally don't get involved in this. <laughs> um, that's why I was asking because people have asked us and don't take to do their dirty work. And if it's if it's law, it's law. I get it. But right. if it's not law, I'm not gonna you know fight against right. a neighbor or something. So well, and again, the sprinkler, the end of the sprinkler thing. I, it, and again, please don't take this the wrong way. I, I don't. I'm not looking for you know, zoning to mandate that. I have enough responsibility. I hate using the authority word, but I have the responsibility and, and the, the law to back up that, you know, I'll get that done. Okay. Without right. a problem, you know. Okay, I can, I, can I interject? Can I, okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Captain Ellis, as you know, I, I, I've already researched the cost of the sprinklers and it's, it's not gonna be an issue to do that if right. that's the requirement. It's affordable. Where you know, at first I wasn't sure what I'd be dealing with, but um, I, I wouldn't. You know, I'm not against doing that whatsoever. I'm not going to push back on that at all. Obviously, right. and, and yeah, I, I think I misunderstood. I think I misunderstood you, Scott. I thought you were asking us to make it a condition, but no, no. What I'm I saying is, is just to make you aware that uh, one of the other commissioners, and I apologize, I forget who it is had said that this would then be a condition of the building permit and building department to mm -hmm. carry out whatever conditions you put on. Yep. And what I'm saying is, is as it sits right now, he wouldn't be applying for a building permit for anything. He's not building anything. Mm -hmm. So the only regulatory agency that would be involved would be uh, Rick from, uh, you know, and, and Jen and whatnot from, from staff with zoning and yep. then myself with, you know, fire lane, uh, exiting that kind of thing as an existing building. He's not technically building anything. Okay, good. So I'm up. Okay. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, and, and again, you know, I, I guess the implication that that, that I and, and again, I, I did sort of make that discussion. And what what I was trying to say is that the staff would review the final plans prior to accepting, you know, the application, consistent with the conditions that we put in. Um, on the, you know, approval so that, you know, because normally they would take the, the final plan and use it for a building permit. If they don't need a building permit, the final plan would have to include all the conditions or modifications to include the conditions that we put on this application in order to approve it. Or do you want to, or do you just want to table this, Rick, till the next meeting and have them bring in the final plan? You, you know, I, I, I guess you know that there's, there's, there's so many different, yeah, and and is, if he has an architect that that's working on it for sure, um, you know, it's one of those kind of things where you know there's a, a lot of permutations that could occur, and it's just a matter of determining, you know, whether it's a series of of bollards, whether it's um, a planter system, it's Jersey barriers that are dressed up to look a little, you know, nicer than the ordinary Jersey barriers. You know, there's, there's a whole gambit of what could happen. And, you know, and, and, and realistically, you know, I, it, it might take some time to, to put some relative costs together versus, you know, if, if I go down this direction, it might cost this much. If I do this, it might cost that much rather than, you know, have them to try to determine that in a two week period. To, to allow him to, to work, you know, with the planning department to, and, and the, the, our staff to, you know, come up with, with something that is definitely safe for the, you know, like you said, safe for the patrons, safe for the pedestrians and, and meets the liquor, you know, requirement, you know, the liquor regulation requirements. 
question. And not that we have to put that in there, but ultimately that they still have to meet that anyways. Right, because I, th I think they have the full support of the commission. Correct. But they also have the safety concerns of the entire commission, which we're all very, very nervous about approving and we're all throwing different ideas out there. And you're right, it's not up to us to design it, it's up to Phil. And he, I mean, if he wanted to go with Jersey barriers, I'd be okay with that. Yes, it would look horrible, but that's his decision, not ours. So, um, I, I mean, I personally would like to see a better plan than this for the safety part of it. Okay. You under, I, I think I you, have, you, you understand what we're looking for, Phil. You can come up with something. Yes, and, and like what uh, Commissioner Petronella said, the tree idea. I, I'm good with that. It doesn't have to be Ballard's, doesn't have to be Jersey barriers, just something heavy that's going to protect. I, aesthetically, that would look a lot nicer. I didn't know those things existed. Um, yep. You know, this is the first time doing a project like this or trying to, I should say. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. A, I, where would I even cost those out or look for those? I Check with the mall because they used to have them inside the mall. They had them? The okay. Center corridor. Uh, you, I, okay. You can probably just Google it, uh, um, uh, Phil. Just, yeah, just Google a precast concrete planters or something of that sort. And, okay. and, and a bunch of options will come up. So so right. I think I think you see you've got uni unanimous support, Phil. It's just we all want to see a you know a plan that's definitely gonna relate to safety. And uh, if you want to work with Scott on it to make sure he's okay, that's fine. But okay. we're not wasting your time. We're definitely not wasting your money. If you get it to us next meeting, I'm sure we can get you right through next meeting. So, when is the next meeting? Jen? Uh, I believe that is the 25th, March 25th. Of this month? Yep. Yes. Okay. And, I do have one it, more question. I don't know if I if yep. I missed this or not, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, this, the, if, this gets fenced in. It cannot touch the building or it can? It cannot because you'd be obstructing. Right. And that's where I think you're going to have a problem because you'd be obstructing the flow of the pedestrians walking along the mall. And that's okay. where. Scott, I, what do I need for an opening from the building? Um, is it six feet for a walkway? Generally, you're going to need to keep, what did we say? Hold on one second. Let me look at my notes. I don't remember. Mr. Chairman, perhaps yes. we could discuss all of these uh, design criteria off the outside of the meeting. Yeah. Sure, I apologize. Okay, fair enough. No, no, no. What we're doing is we're discussing the, the unobstructed travel of pedestrians down right. the sidewalk. I understand that, right. but <clears throat> that's going to be... Uh, delegated by the fire marshal in the state so no it's delegated well, it's by us too because i would never approve an outdoor okay. patio that is obstructing these sidewalks lori we none of us would i'm if not saying that they're going to i'm just saying we're talking design criteria and i just you know to move things along knowing that we're going to table this perhaps we could just uh we could discuss this as staff and and yeah and and I want Phil to be exactly clear on what he needs. And he asked the question. So when he comes back in two weeks, he can get the approval he's seeking. So you got the answer you need, Phil? I can talk with Scott offline. Um, he probably doesn't have it in front of him. But I have an idea how we could fence this in if need be. Okay. I, and absolutely. I, we can, and to what Lauren's saying, we can absolutely work out the minutia. There's a few other angles we can even look at if there is a requirement for exit only and maintaining exit requirements for the building. There's, there's things we can talk about. Okay, sounds okay, good. Okay. I'll entertain right. a motion to table. I'll move. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Okay, the mo uh, motion carries. It's been tabled to next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very Have much. Have a good night. Thank you. Um.
public hearing 2996 Nine Overhill Drive, special permit and site plan review for the expansion of a non conforming structure to accommodate a breezeway and a garage. Roll call, please. Ben, Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. Don Petronella. Here. Vinny Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And I'll just read, you know, I, I guess the legal notice. And the Infill Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their next regular meeting on March 11th concerning the following application. And it's public hearing 2996, Nine Overhill Drive, and special permit and site plan review application for the expansion of a non conforming structure to accommodate a breezeway and garage addition. Peter Martin, owner applicant, map 54, lot 33, R33 zone. And that's it. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. Peter Martin, 9 Overhill Road, Enfield. Welcome, Peter. Tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do. <laughs> Just one note briefly is Overhill Road, you guys have drive on there. I don't know how much of a difference that makes. Uh, on that note, uh, thank you for hearing us tonight. Um, trying to get the breezeway and garage flush with the front of the house and the house happened closer to the street than I think it was uh, originally intended to be. So we're looking to move it forward five feet. So, so this is another one that the zone has created a hardship for these homeowners. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So how how much longer is it before we change the regulation on this so these people don't have to keep coming to us and paying this money? It will happen during our, our current zone, zoning regulation change. I, I guarantee it because it's been going I, on two years, Rich. I, I know in, in terms of, you know, unfortunately, we, we hit, there's so many properties that are non-conforming because the zone got changed on them. And for us to change every single property or every single section of town that, that this affects, I think that, you know, when, when we're analyzing our, you know, zoning regulations, we will address it such that if a property had a certain met the criteria of the zoning regulations at the time it was built, and there was a zone change that occurred after the, the, the property was in place, then you know it, it, it would always remain a conforming lot in, in, in accordance with the old regulations, not necessarily the new. And the new regulations would only uh, uh, pertain to new construction that was not part of the original construction of the original zoning regulations and development. So with that said, you know, I, it, this should be an, a, an easy application for sure. All right, is there any commissioners who would like to speak in favor, or, or, I'm sorry, that would like to speak about this? Seeing none, I'm gonna open this up to the public right now. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor against public hearing 2996, Nine Overhill Drive? Going for the first time, going for the second time, and going for the third time. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we close public hearing 2996. Motion's made, is there a second? It's second. made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, how would you like to proceed? Mr. Mo Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the, uh, I guess, draft, the, the re resolution to approve public hearing 2996. Um, I'm just making sure that that's, yes, 2996 as prepared by the planning department with the 14 conditions that, that are indicated, zero, zero site specific conditions. And that's it. Okay, motions, motions made and seconded. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. 
Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. John? You're, you're muted. Uh, four, I'm sorry. Oh. Lindy Grillo. Four. And Rich Suzak is four. All in favor, none against. Motion passes. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry you had to come tonight. <laughs> thank you very much, folks. Good night. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Old business, seeing none. New business. Uh, SPR 1849, 604 Enfield Street. Is there Jen, Lori, anybody here for the applicant? Um, I thought I had seen the applicant on. Oh, he's muted. Rich, okay. is it Richard? Richard. Yeah. Hello, Richard Maloney. Good evening. How you doing, Richard? Welcome evening, tonight. Sir. Tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do. Uh, well, part of this is a change of use application. Uh, the previous occupant in there was assembly use. Now it's being changed to mercantile. Uh, we've signed the lease with Namco Pools uh, to open a store there. And we are uh, looking to put a uh, overhead door on the front wall of the building uh, in order to enable uh, moving of their product, uh, in particular need for it because of their spas, the size of their spas into the into their storage area uh, and then onto the the, uh, the showroom floor uh, for their business. Got to excuse me, new chair in my back is killing me. So, Commissioner DeGray. Um, just my question was, I know the plaza really well. I've spent many years going to that gym in there. And uh, why does it have to be an overhead door? Why can't it be like a metal double door? Because it's the overhead door just doesn't look like it would fit the aesthetics of that particular um, plaza at this time. Um, the the products that they're moving in and out, uh, my understanding, and, and the um, there are two representatives, I believe, here with us also this evening from Namco. But the spas uh, measure uh, eight foot by eight foot. Uh, plus a little larger than eight foot when you put the packing material around it, uh, to as large as eight foot by 10 foot. Um, and so you would need very, very large sliding doors to be able to accommodate that size of a product. Okay, thank our plan, you. Our plan is to paint the uh, door the same color as the building wall. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Higley. I just want to say that Namco has been in town a long time and I'm very happy that they're finding um, a place that's uh, empty and making bringing it back into uh, use again. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Jenny. Commissioner Alimo. Yeah, is the door overhead proposed overhead door going right where that arrow is indicating on your on your application? If you're looking at the site plan where I put an arrow uh, pointing toward the basically the corner of the storefront, yes, sir. That's that right where, where the right the front right to the left to the left of where the pedestrian entry doors are. Correct. Right. That's so that's exactly where you want to put that overhead door. Yes, and that would be their storage room right there behind that. Now, door. does that overhead door the ends of it match up with those two columns? The, they, yeah, they match with the, the columns on the front of the building. So it's, 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 so it's and as wide as the columns are. Well, it's a 10 foot wide door. Right. And honestly, sir, I believe the columns are 10 foot wide, perhaps a hair wider. Okay. 
No, I'm just asking for aesthetically. So when you're looking at it, it kind of falls between those two columns. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any more commissioners. Aesthetically, I think it's gonna look horrible. How come you can't do something like a, a car dealership does where they do sliding storefronts where like three panels collapsed into one and that would give you the opening you need to get in and out and still maintain the aesthetics of the front of that building? Um, we had briefly discussed using a glass panel overhead door uh, with, with the tenant. Um, they really don't want people looking into their storage room. Uh, they'd rather them look into the showroom where the pools and patio furniture and such are. Uh, so they, they, you know, they indicated that if it were to be a glass door, that they would want it frosted out anyways on the inside, so you can't look in. Right, and then how are you going to address the forklift driving across the pedestrian walkway? Well, they're not going to have a forklift, sir. Okay. Commissioner um, Limo. I'm sorry, I forgot to put my hand down. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, we did receive further comments from departments. Um, if you want me to read those into the record sure. uh, after the staff report. Um, in the staff report, uh, we did not have engineering comments at the time, but engineering did uh, send comments eventually saying that they have reviewed the material submitted for the subject application loading and unloading across the sidewalk and the fire lane does not appear to be a safe option. Is the merchandise being loaded slash unloaded from trucks? What size vehicles will be involved with these operations? Are pool contractors picking up the merchandise? How long will access be limited on the sidewalk and drive aisle for loading and unloading operations? Typically loading areas are on the rear of retail plazas for safety. In looking at the building front today, it appears that there is already a boarded up hole in the building at the location of the proposed overhead door. Um, there was also a comment from the health department, which also wasn't included, or actually they said they have no comment from our department regarding the overhead door. Um, and then the fire department uh, sent an email as well. Um, I think Scott might actually still be on. Um, or maybe he left. No, nope, oh, he's, he's here. <laughs> um, so I don't know if Scott wants to read his own uh, comments in. I know that the applicant did also address those comments in an email to us. Um, and he also addressed the building department um, comments as well. So um, if you, if I see, they're both on the call. So if they want me to read those, their emails into the record, I'd be more than happy to, but. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah. It, um... My big issue uh, really centered around the product, and that's really almost cart before the horse. It was just knowing what they were going to have for um, pool product, spa product, and whatnot in there, which you know corresponds to it. It's a sprinkler building, et cetera. Um, however, seeing the um, other comments uh, from other staff regarding the fire lane for edification on that, um, I did go over and um, take a look, uh, just from my familiarity with the building question was raised, you know, in many cases, um, you have, uh, the rear area of the store is where loading and unloading would take place. Um, I don't know how well this is going to work. I'm a low tech guy, but if you can see, I took a photo and that's the rear of the store with my vehicle there, just a little Explorer parked in the rear completely obstructs the fire lane and complete access for that whole back side of the building. Whereas the front of the building with the fire lane, um, again, this isn't exactly high tech here, I apologize, but there is a significant amount of room left in the front. So fire apparatus, emergency apparatus can absolutely get around if there happens to be a vehicle loading or unloading. Now, I understand that, you know, again, generally in plazas, loading and unloading takes place in the rear. However, the uniqueness of 604, the fact that it was built, as I think it was one of the first plazas in town of that style, it's much tighter in back. Um, 
from a standpoint from the fire department and fire marshal, um, you know, use within Enfield with the ordinance of loading and unloading in the fire lane is absolutely permitted so long as the vehicle is attended to. Um, and, uh, you know, it would not be, it would be a better use to have that vehicle parked in the fire lane in front than it would be in the back for us. Um, and then, you know, again, you know, no comment on the overhead door, um, you know, other than we would look at it, you know, from a, a, you know, once the building application and plans are submitted, but that's, that's outside of our, you know, outside of my opinion set aesthetically or whatnot, but as far as the fire lane or any obstruction with that, there's, I would rather see it in the front than in the back. Thanks, Scott. Um, so I see the towns, the engineer has the same concerns I do about travel across the pedestrian way. Um, commissioners, any other, anybody? Seeing none. Um, what do you guys want to do? Go ahead, Rich. I, I, I guess, you know, I, I hear, you know, the aesthetics of this door have an impact on, you know, possibly what, you know, the, the, the plaza looks like now and, and you know, and, and possibly what, what happens is that, you know, the new owners can put in a door that, that you know, the, the, there's so many overhead doors that are available, so many different styles and so many different, you know, finishes that you could have on and, and it would it would be, you know, I guess conducive to everybody involved if that it it it's stays stays with the I guess aesthetics of the existing plaza, whatever they put in there, it should should sort of try to match, you know, all the, the existing conditions that exist or complement them. And um, if that if that something like that happens and you know, it, it, I, I would be for it because of the fact that, you know, looking at, you know, the access from the back is, is, that doesn't really comply with a lot of, you know, what everybody else is sort of leaning towards. So um, the lesser of the two evils would be that, you know, the, 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 the door aesthetically matches the existing, you know, plaza architecture. And, <coughs> You know, at, we, we, we just be cognizant of the fact that, you know, there are going to be people used in the sidewalk and that you, you just can't, you know, take total control of, of the sidewalk, you know, uh, during times. And, and, and maybe what happens is the delivery schedule should be such that it either occurs, you know, early in the morning or late at night or whenever there's less pedestrian traffic there. So, um, but with, with that said, you know, I, I would support this um, application application, um, the site plan review for, you know, those reasons and in, with those kind of, you know, conditions in, included in, in our um, specific um, motion to approve. Type of thing. Do you want to see a plan with the, or do you want to see the door? You, you, you know, I, and again, I would leave it up to staff to, you know, look at you, you know, I, I don't think that I specifically want to get involved in picking a door. And, and you know, I think that what we want to do is we just want to indicate that it has to be compatible with the architecture that's there. And, you know, and, and you know, hopefully we, we have, you know, adequate representation in our staff that, you know, could, could make that kind of decision in terms of, you know, I think that, you know, it, we have, you know, plenty of examples of, you know, overlay districts and what's allowed, what's not allowed, and, and that the, the staff should be able to, to incorporate, you know, that into, you know, the approval process. Okay. Commissioner DeGray. Um, just, I, I agree with Rich that it should be aesthetically pleasing. I do know that that whole plaza has been revamped over the years to make it look really nice. So I'd hate to see something that just looks like a metal door that you'd put on a warehouse. That's my concern. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. How do you guys want to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve site plan review 1849 um, in conformance with the um, with the resolution as prepared by staff dated um, April or March 11th. And with the um, 15 um, conditions that are indicated, there is one site specific condition. And I think that we want to include that, you know, with the comments of all the, the, the town building department, the town departments shall be addressed in, instead of just the building department. And we want to include a condition that says that, you know, the architecture and the aesthetics of the overhead door shall match, you know, the, 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 the architecture of the existing plaza, you know, configuration, whatever it happens to be. And that staff would should review that for conformance. <laughs> How do you want them to address the safety concerns with loading and unloading across the sidewalk? <laughs> well, I think again, you know, we, we can add another condition where we say that shall be done during non-peak, you know, sidewalk. Well, that, I'm just saying because that's one of the town's staff's comments, right? And I just don't know how you address that. Well, I think that you know you would address it, you know, in in the fact that. It, it, it can't be from the back, so, you, know, you know, because of the mm -hmm. fact that there's not enough space there. So it has to be from the front so that we would just encourage that, you know, and, and again, you know, you see it all the time whenever, you know, you're in Home Depot and they're, they're working on an aisle, they close down the aisle. So, you know, I think that, you know, they would have to, you know, if there was a pedestrian that was going to be using, you know, the, the area, you know, they would have to stop their operation in order to allow that pedestrian to, to safely pass through. And then they can restart their operation. But I think that it would be on, you know, the, you know, I, I guess the personnel that are using the, you know, space, if it conflicts with, you know, the safety of, you know, pedestrians, they, they, they just have to, you know, utilize that, you know, they're loading and unloading at times when there are no pedestrians. Okay. And Motions. we can make that another, you know, condition of approval. You know, that would be, you know, so that would be 15 plus two conditions of approval. All right. Is there a second? Second. Motions made and seconded. Uh, roll call. Ken Nelson. Against. Linda DeGray. Against. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. Benny Grillo. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. Okay, motion passes six in favor, two against. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, other business. Extension requests, public hearing 2836, 144, 146 South Road, Tarno Nursery. Um, so this approval, there was approval that took place for Toronto Nursery um, in 2016, and the deadline to um, complete the work was or is May 5th, 2021. Um, they're looking for an extension for yeah, five years to complete the project. Before they get to May. And um, I believe that uh, I think Dana, are you here to represent the application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here and uh, Carl Landolin is here as well. Did you want to say anything, Carl? Uh, yes, briefly. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission for the record, Carl Landolina. So I think uh, Jen put it very concisely. There is, there's a, was a, a special permit and site plan approved for the property. The site plan has a five year expiration date that's coming up in May. All the work that's, uh, that was approved under the site plan has not been completed as of this point, and the applicant is looking for another five years to uh, build out their remaining work and improvements uh, approved under the plan. So um, that's generally it. Now, if you have any technical questions, Dana's here, obviously, you can, can respond to them. So with that, I would turn it over to Dana. 
Thanks, Carl. Yeah, for, for the record, Dana Steele, uh, uh, professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates at One Showham Road in East Windsor. Um, uh, so it was uh, almost five years ago, we were here with an application for Tarno and, and uh, um, the progress has been slow. Uh, some of that because of because of the economy and, and what's what's happening and uh, with the economy now it has hasn't certainly hasn't helped uh, but uh, my client needs more time to to he's still interested in doing these improvements uh, but he's he's uh, um, moving at a, at a pace that he can afford to and um, uh, there I, I know that uh, you received a report from uh, from staff regarding, past violations at the site. And I, I discussed those with uh, my, my client. And um, apparently in 2017, he was cited for uh, um, stockpiling materials in the parking lot, which is supposed to be for, for parking of vehicles. And so uh, he uh, re removed those, those materials. And then just recently he was cited again uh, for uh, this time it was for stone uh, in the in, in the parking lot. When I spoke to uh, to, to Shan Shannon about it, uh, he said that that material was for the construction of the of, of the site. So I I really saw it as more of a construction staging issue than it wasn't product that he was selling the way that he described it. So, um, but uh, he did go to the to to, um, to the appeals meeting and and they upheld the citation. So. Um, he's going to abide by that and, and he's going to keep the materials out of the parking area. And if he wants to put materials in the parking area, we'd have to come back to you for a modification, but that's not what we're, we're here for at this time. We're just here for, uh, an, an extension. And so if you have any questions about that, be happy to answer them. Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. Uh, Dana, why, I, I understand he wants, uh, he's running out, but why another um, five years? You have to understand our part. No matter what we tell him, he just seems to do the opposite, like we're not even saying it. And that's why we obviously go out there and he gets citations. This has been going on for years. My question is why, why, why is he asking for another five years? Uh, well, five years. I go by it every day, so I see what goes on there every day. I'm I'm kind of on that just because of all the citations and what he doesn't do and do all the time. Um, so I'm always looking. So I, I'm just wondering why why such a long, um, I mean, ten years to do something for a project, uh, a long time, no. Yeah, it, it's um, you know, it, it's it's a matter of uh, of financing, you know, and and the success of the business. Everything everything's you know driven by how many customers and how you know how much business they're they're doing. So it's it's difficult to to predict. Uh, the the I think the 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 law allows an additional five years if if you'd be more comfortable with a a, a, a lesser time, um, you could have us come back more uh, sooner than that if that's what. But but I, w our thought was not to have to keep coming back uh, more frequently. Uh, we'd ask for the full five years, but we're we're flexible if if you're feel um, that you need to see us more frequently. And it's not that I want to see you more frequently. It's just that in five years it's going to be another five years. And then in five years it's going to be another five years. And to be honest with you, not much has been getting done, but trees been taken down and lot getting cleared in the last five years. That's all that's been done. That I can assure you. So that's the only thing I'm asking. Is this going to be a 20-year project or? I, I don't know. And, and believe me, I understand the finances. I, I, I have a small business myself. It's, I, I totally get that. But it it's kind of gets to be an eyesore sometimes when you just drop soil and stuff and out in front of it. It doesn't. I, I, I just think it's think it's getting dragged on way too long over there. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, certainly the, the issue about the soil and the product and the materials in the parking lot, um, e even if you don't grant this extension, the business is still there. The special use is still there. Um, it does, the special use doesn't expire. There, 
um, th that's really more of an enforcement issue. He, he shouldn't be um, putting materials in the, in, in the front parking lot. And, and I, and, and up to be honest, what, what happened the second time too, is it, it was during COVID when the business was closed. And I think, so what, what he thought was, well, nobody's using the parking lot now. So it, it didn't seem like it was a, it, it was a, 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 a big deal. And I explained to him, I said, it's, it's just an issue of the use and uh, that area is not designated for, for the, um, for, for, the, for that to stockpile material. That's supposed to be in the back where it's less visible. So uh, I've explained it to him and, uh, um, and, and, and I think, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what to tell you as far as, uh, you know, how, you know, when it's going to get done, because I don't, I don't have a crystal ball to know, you know, what the economy is going to do and how, how the business is going to do. So, um, you know, we're, we're flexible with whatever you're, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, we, but, but he, he doesn't want to just give up on this. He still has a vision and, and he's, he's moving towards it. And he just needs more time. No, and, and that's totally, and honestly, and I wish him the best. And I think he's in a great spot. He's, he's doing it, but you know what? You can sell the material in where he's supposed to put it. Yeah, and, uh, you, you follow, I agree. You follow what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's yeah, he, he needs to keep the material where where, where it was called, called out on the plans. And, and that's, he's got to comply with that. Thank yep. you. If I may, uh, Commissioner Grillo, uh, for the record, Carl Andalina. So under your stat, under your regulations and the statutes as well, he can only get another five years from you. So uh, he can't go longer than that. If he he's not done in five years, the the uh, the site plan will expire, and he'd have to come back with a new application at which you'd you know act on in according with uh, regulations in place at that time. But Dana's right; you don't have to give him five years. I mean, that's the max you can give him at this point. If you want to give him two or three and see how it goes, and if he needs to come back, I suppose. I'll have to address it at that time, but that you're totally within your discretion. So thank you, sir. I did not, to be honest with you, I did not know that that the, the, the five was the extra. Yeah, there was full, but thank you for clearing yeah, that for no, me. You, you're welcome. There was what happened, uh, Commissioner, was there was a period uh, a few years ago where they changed it and because of the economy in the 80s and they let people go up to 14, but now they're back to the the 10 and 10 and done. But you know, your, your other comments are well taken. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll say Commissioner Grillo. That's it, thank you. Commissioner DeGray. Yeah, um, I sat on the commission when we approved this site plan and there's a lot of things that I haven't seen done that he promised to get done. There's only a certain number of vehicles that are supposed to be on that property. He's supposed yep. to have them parked inside, not outside. There's been no construction for a garage to house these vehicles. Uh, again, this site is nothing but cleared lot and nothing i i don't see any real progression and yes we've had a pandemic but that's only this last year prior to that he had time to start doing some of the things that he was supposed to do and i've seen nothing but multiple vehicles that shouldn't be there some of them look like they aren't even working so uh, um, Another five years. I don't know where this is going to go in five years. If, if I could respond, um, the the plan uh, called for two buildings. Um, one was to be used for small engine repair and sales, I think, and the other was uh, for rental equipment to selling of, of rental equipment. So those buildings have not been constructed, but they weren't for um, garaging vehicles. That there was area designated on the plant outside area designated for 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 the parking of, of vehicles so it needed a certain you know landscape buffers and, and things that had to be installed um so some of that may may um i i believe the landscaping is in um but uh that's 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 my recollection so is that does that is that ringing a bell or does that sound sound right to you 
he was supposed to have his vehicles parked inside and he was supposed to have a garage for them. And there was only a limited number of vehicles that were supposed to be parked on the property. Um, I remember that because uh, I remember the chairman at the time being very adamant about that. I don't know if I can share the, the site plan. Um, I've got the site plan here. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it just seems like clearing of trees is all that seems to happen there. And so, and I understand finances and I understand it's a small business. But so yeah, if, if, if he's parking vehicles that um, are more vehicles than he's allowed, then then that's um, that that needs to change. Um, if uh, um, if the buildings are, are just not uh, built yet, um, that's that's a matter of 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 the, the the speed at which at which he can proceed, and that's why he's asking for more time. So, um, Thank you. thanks. All set, Commissioner DeGray? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Suzak. Because a concern that I have is, is, and again, I'll voice the same opinion that, you know, the other, you know, commissioners have is, is that, you, you know, he clear cut the entire back area of his property and, and he harvested the trees. And, and basically he was supposed to go back and, and plant some nursery plantings there. And, and he's in the nursery business. And, you know, I don't believe that's happened, you know, in, in terms of if you're in a nursery business and, and you're supposed to have this, you know, five acre, or, you know, what it was a large, you know, a area that, that he clear cut. And for the, the fact that he was gonna, you know, create his own, you know, nursery stock. And, and, and it, obviously it's always cheaper to, to create your own stock than to try to have to buy it all the time. And that hasn't happened. And I, I'm just wondering, you, you know, when is that going to happen? You know, he's in the nursery business and shouldn't he be planting trees or little shrubs or, or you know, whatever he was anticipating planting in that, that rear, you know, area? And, and, and I guess I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, it's just another excuse that to not to have to do something. And, and you know, I would like to see some some progress or or some kind of a timetable if, if he could sort of say you know the first year you know I'll, I'll do this something that costs the least amount of money plant things in, in his right. nursery that he's supposed to be at you know and, and and you know that doesn't even cost anything and and then you know some kind of a timetable but you know just to, to give him five more years and and without seeing any kind of progress I think that you know it, it would be nice to have like you said, a timetable. So at least we can sort of judge whether he's going forward or whether he's you know, just staying stagnant. Sure. Would, would you like me to, uh, to get Shannon on the phone? He, he had trouble with his uh, computer connecting, but I, I can call him on the phone, put him on speaker and have him address, uh, address that if that's helpful. You, you know, I, I think, you know, like he said, you know, I, I, I just don't want to be in the dark all the time. And in terms of you, you know, you, you want to see progress and you want to help those that are, are actually making, you know, positive, you know, impact on, on what they're, they, they promise to do. You know, you, you just don't want excuses all the time. And, and again, you know, and, and maybe, you know, the, the excuses make some sense because of the fact that, you know, maybe he, he, you know, did not, you know, progress as quickly as he should have. But, but I think that, you know, some of this, the improvements could definitely be done that that don't necessarily cost you know the significant you know have a, a significant amount of investment to, to start so right so what what would you like to see would you um you, would you like to would you like me to get shannon on the phone would you like uh, well you know uh, i i guess you know i i it's, it's up to the rest of the commissioners in terms of uh -huh. you know I, I again you know i think i think that you know if we we need some answers and and whether you know if he's not available today, you know, we'll just postpone it and, and we'll ask on the next, you know, meeting and, and at least try to give us some kind of a timetable. You know, what do you expect to do within the next five years and, and how do you expect to achieve this? And or give us some kind of a, you know, sequence that that we should expect things to happen. And, and 
you know, and then it's easier to make a decision. You know, I, I think that you should have, you, you know, some additional time, but, but uh, you know, we also want to see progress of, to, to occur, you know, during this additional time, not necessarily say, okay, we got five years, let's, let's, you know, wait until the fifth year before we have to try to do something, because that, that's never going to happen, you know, it, it's got to be a progressive type of thing that happens. I, I think Lori's trying to, to say <laughs> something, do you want to? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may I? Sure. Uh, I, 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 as I said before, since I'm the host, I can't raise my hand on the participants list. So um, perhaps maybe we could, uh, the commission could consider uh, giving a one year um, extension and at the next time that they come in, if they need to come in, then they need to give you a timeline as to uh, when things will be accomplished. I, I've got yeah. Shannon on the phone here, if you'd like to he hear him offer a explanation now. Go ahead, Shannon. Hi guys, um, there's a lot of improvement been done. Um, the bins in the back are almost finished, just at the bottom of the bins, gotta be paved, the lot being clear cut, the pond's been dug in the back, the uh, retention pond is under construction, there are trees in there that's, uh, that's for sale. I mean, there is so much I can do. Um, the parking lot has been done next to the house to park the vehicles. So I don't um, see what the, you know, I'm hearing that I haven't done much, but apparently, I mean, I mean, you guys should probably come in or something and look at it and see how much I've been done. With the economy so bad, I mean, I got a lot of stuff done. And um, the bins are going to be done this, this spring. So is the retention pond. And I keep moving on from there. I think within the next five years, I'll probably get everything done with the site, um, provided the economy, you know, gets better. I mean, I only can do so much. You know, I try to get loans to do it, but nobody wants to give a loan at this time. Um, I, my hands are kind of tied. I only can do what I can, you know. For a little bit of money I get, I spend it into the place, into that site. There's nothing else I can do. Yeah. Shannon, what 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 about uh, Lori's suggestion of a, of a one year extension and uh, um, and and, uh, um, and we come back next year to to kind of give some more update and show the progress that that you've made in a year. Is that like you you mentioned getting the bins in so that there's a designated area for those materials um, so that they won't be in the parking lot? I think that that would be one thing that would be a good progress to show. Well, it's up to the commission to, you know, whatever they grant, yeah. whatever time they grant me, then I have to go with that. I mean, I get, like I said, Dana, you know, it's only so much I can do with the amount of funds I got. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that's, like I said, um, I'm hoping that I can get all the bins done this spring and uh, the retention pond and, you know, um, <clears throat> and try to plant some stuff in the back. Uh, I mean, I was hoping that I can plant some pumpkin and stuff to sell at the store, some vegetables in the back this spring but again it's all depends on the economy so I mean? so so you don't think that that the, is because i was one of uh commissioner suzak's uh uh thoughts is that the 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 area that's been clear cut um you know why why aren't those being planted is that is there is, because because the amount of money that you need to purchase those those plants and and to, to grow them or is is no, it's got to be cultivated because when they clear cut the trees, there was a lot of stuff that's there that needs to be rot, needs to be leveled, you know, and I've been trying to do that a little bit of time. Okay, so there's still um, some grading that needs to be done. Yes. Okay. So I, I think the commission would like to see some more progress uh, with that. And, uh, and so uh, hopefully in the, in the next uh, year, whatever amount of time the commission grants uh, this evening, um, we can we can then report back some some more progress. Uh, hopefully that'll be uh, make everyone feel okay. a little better. Um, I, I hope that was helpful, Mr. Chairman. Um, appreciate you uh, accommodating that uh, sort of approach to communicating. I'll say, Commissioner Suzak. Yeah, yeah. I I think that you know I I'm. I'm I, I would support Laurie's, you know, 
suggestion that, you know, we extend it a year and, and have them come back in the year with, you know, some kind of report. And, and like you said, you know, I, I think that there, there could be a lot of progress that's done that, that you know, and, and again, I, I believe he's in the landscaping business. So, you know, digging these detention ponds and, and re, you know, re, re, you know, I, I, I guess they're, they're the circulation pond or whatever we, they're calling it. Um, yeah. Yeah the, yeah. yeah, the pond has been partially constructed. Uh, well, the irrigation pond, I think, is done. Right. The, 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 the stormwater pond has been partially constructed. And um, I think the outlet structure is still. But, but, but the, all that does is take a backhoe and have somebody dig it for, you know, a, a weekend or something. You know, the, it, it's not that big. And, it, you know, it, 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 it's Nobody just more, a little bit of labor rather than, you know, a lot of spending money type of thing. So. But any, anyways, I, I would support a one-year extension and, and then come back and, and give us a report as to, you know, what, what, what just, just to make sure that we're making progress every year. Thank you. Uh, did wetlands extend the permit? Um, we have an app. Be, Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, they're hearing it next week. So these detention ponds and this work, was that all part of the original special permit? Yes. Yes. So Dana, you made a comment that said, you know, well, if we don't do the work, we don't lose our special permit. How does that work? I wasn't part of this five years ago. Yeah, well, the, the, a special permit runs with the land. It doesn't, it's not, um, uh, it doesn't really have an expiration date, uh, special permit. Uh, but um, the, 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 the site improvements have a certain uh, time frame and if and if you don't have the necessary site improvements then I guess you can't operate the use but I don't think you need to get the use approved again but if if the time runs out they'd have to come back for another site plan approval to build the improvements necessary to go along with it I, th that's my understanding when it from a technical standpoint when it comes to special permits so they, they don't expire but but the site plan can expire right but the what I'm getting at is the detention pond's not even in yet. The land's all cleared and the detention pond's not done. And it's, it's my understanding it, it's not finished. It is, it is, there is a pond there uh, and it's providing um, uh, some, uh, some, some treatment, but, the, but the, the outlet structure hasn't been constructed, I believe. So. Right, so everything he was supposed to do that got him his special permit hasn't been done. And, and, and you and him keep saying the economy, the economy, the economy has been the best in the last five years than it's been in a long, long time. How much better is it going to get? Right. I don't see it getting better. I see it getting worse. You see the price of fuel and everything, the way it's going up? I mean, real estate's at an all-time high, so throwing the economy at us, and we don't go with finances anyways. You make a, a deal to, you know do all this work, we give you an approval, and then you come back and you say, oh, oh well, I'm working on it. I, I'm not buying that. It's, it don't work. And then, you know, he's got all this cleared land, but yet he still keeps doing the same thing and getting violated for it again. How many times you got to be violated before you realize it's wrong? Well, or there, you just don't care. There was, there, there was only two, two violations. The, the, the first one in 2017, or, or 29, there, there, there was a wetland issue in 2017. Uh, uh, that, that was done uh, um, around the time of the, the, the approval process. Then, then there was um, two issues in the parking lot with, with material, one in 2019 and one just this, this, uh, this, this year. And, um, and, and as I explained, the, the, the second one was because the parking lot was empty, he thought he thought it was okay because nobody was using it anyway. But uh, I've I've explained that to him. So I I I don't think it's been uh, multiple or re repeated vi violations. Has been a couple, and 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 we've I, I think addressed it. So uh, I, uh, I I appreciate that you feel that five years should be enough to get it done. Um, the the, the the law allows us to request an extension if 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 you don't grant an extension um i i i suppose we would just have to come back to you for another site plan approval i, I don't know what that would 
accomplish, but um, we would, we'd have to come in for another public hearing process and go through that, that process again in order to proceed. Um, and so it, it's, uh, we're, just, we're asking for a little more time and we appreciate your consideration. What about the storage of other companies' equipment on this property? I mean, Commissioner DeGray is saying that it was required that the equipment be stored inside. And I believe he's had tree companies store equipment there and stuff like that also beyond his equipment. And none of it's supposed to be outside. Well, um, there is an area um, uh, that's designated for, for the, uh, the, the storing of, uh, of, of vehicles and, and, and equipment um, commercial vehicles, trailers, and, and, and rental equipment display. Um, as far as other businesses uh, in there, I, I, I agree. Those are not um, indicated on the, on the approved plan. So that's an enforcement issue. I don't have other business uh, stuff stored here. Um, Shannon saying he doesn't have other businesses there. What what were the tree uh, service trees that that's um... because he was doing some work on the trees for me. Oh, okay, so uh -huh. so they, they okay. were there doing work. All right, where is this area you're referring to for storage of equipment and uh, vehicles, uh, Mr. Chairman? It's to, if you look at the driveway going in to the right, there's to the a, right. a yep. there's gravel surface for parking of and storage of commercial vehicles, trailers, and rental equipment display. That's what Dan is referring to. Okay, 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 I see it now, I see it yeah. now. Yeah, is that gravel area in? Yes. Is that driveway in? Yes, it's gravel. Yeah, it's, it, it's shown as a, um, a pavers, but it's not It's not pavers, it's just gravel right, right now. So the. The, the, the access is there, they can park there. It's laid down with melons, so it is there though. Right. Okay, um, my question would be for Lori. Um, since this is part of his special permit and the work wasn't completed, what happens to the special permit if this doesn't pass? The special permit runs with the land. If he can't complete his operations, then as uh, Dana said, he'd have to come back for a brand new um, application. But the special permit is granted. It's just so, like a variance. It runs with the land. So why would he come back? Because he's, he's asking for an extension to complete the improvements. And everybody's economy is different. We, you know, nobody really knows what Okay, you know, we this can... is not an unusual thing. So back to my question. The special permit was granted with these improvements done. Right. The improvements weren't done as a condition of the special permit. Right, but the, 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 the condition that the improvements are part of the site plan approval. So that's what they're, so they're trying to get an extension so they can finish all of these improvements which are part of the special permit, but you've got to remember special permit is for a use. The site plan is for the improvements for that use. Okay. I, I, I don't see any harm in, in just granting one year extension and, and then they can come back and give you a, a much more detailed explanation as to why they haven't or why they have made more progress. Well, what do you Rather mean? They just, have... they just gave us an explanation that you were good with. The economy is not good for some people. Commissioner Alimo. Yeah, thank you. So I've only been involved in one of these extensions since I've been on and that was with the Enfield Housing. So I guess I would like to know, you know, how we normally handle these things. It, it's discretion. We can pick two years or three years or five years. And then uh, secondly, with the citation process that just occurred, can there be some kind of written agreement with timetables on it that these uh, improvements have to be made where the town and the enforcement officer and the applicant can 
actually have a document that's signed by both parties. So it kind of just keeps it moving along progressively. Is there, is that a possibility um, to, to, you know, to have this continue so we see progress? Is, is that something that could be done? Because I see there was just a citation, so I, I'm not sure what. Well, so you have to, re you've got to separate enforcement versus approvals. They're seeking an, uh, an extension of the approval for the improvements. Enforcement is a whole separate issue. But if, if there, if there is continuing violations, can't can't the parties come to an agreement with how they're going to resolve this moving forward and and keep a schedule of, of if you would some some type of schedule? To if I may, uh, Mr. Commissioner, um, the citation process is over with. the The violation has been corrected, and there was a hearing which has been finalized and resulted in the, uh, the hearing officer determining that the fine imposed by the town was appropriate. So he's, he's going to owe the town some amount of money. So, but, so that process is over with and hopefully he won't get cited again and there won't be any need to go back to that process. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, these, you know, from my experience, it's fairly routine. Um, and, and, you know, the reasons why aren't, aren't, aren't as important as we've got a site plan that hasn't been finished for whatever the reasons are. Um, and um, the five years that he's receives under the, under the site plan approval part of the special permit is about to expire. So if he wants to continue on and do the work that was approved on that site plan, he needs your permission to do so. Um, he can get up to five years. You have total discretion to say, no, we're not going to give you five years for whatever reasons. And we'll give you a year or two or whatever it happens to be. So that would keep you on a tighter leash next time. The first five years are sort of, we'll call them complimentary. You know, you don't get to drag them back after two years and say, how's the work coming? But the, the next five, you get to dole out any way you'd like. Um, and if you want to keep a tighter leash on, on the applicant, you certainly can by giving him a year or, or, or whatever. But in terms of if you don't give him the extension in, in May, he's going to have to, before he can do any more work associated with the site plan part, it's not going to shut his business down per se, because he's, that, you know, that's uh, the, the sale of nursery stock and all of that is, you know, long, there's a long history of it there at uh, Tarno's, but he's gonna have to come in and apply for uh, a new site plan approval from you and go through the process of, of doing that. Um, so, and, and if he was successful in getting that, which I, I suspect he probably would be, the regulations haven't changed at all. So whatever authority you had to grant him his permit the first time would still be in effect and at that point, he would get he'd start over with another five years. So I don't see that being a solution. If really what we all want is the same thing, him to complete the improvements as designated on his site plan, the best course of action I would suggest would be to give him the one year, and and have him come back a year from now and say, okay, tell us what you've done in this year, what's been completed, what's left to be done. That, those are my thoughts for, for, for what it's worth. So. That's kind of what I was thinking, you know, some kind of schedule. So that, yeah, I'm good with that. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Grillo. You're muted. I'm sorry, thank you. Carl, I totally understand um, what you're saying. Uh, and I agree with you in a way. However, this has been five years of dragging. It's a game. It's been a game. It's an obvious game. I, if for me to feel happy with anything, I would not go more myself, me speaking for myself, a year. And in that year, I would want to see that retention pond completed anything in that wetlands area and the bins done at minimum and that's not much that's something you 
we all know that could be done in one week if you put your time to it and doesn't cost a lot of money because you're right. He has the equipment and you don't need money to dig a hole in the ground. These are things that could have been done, but they weren't. What happened was waited to the last minute and now we're going to pull the COVID trick. I, I, I would not myself go with the five year, but I would definitely would consider giving him a year extension with, with, with knowing that when he came back in that one year, that what we asked for is done, completely done, or there's a consequence, I guess. Does, does that sound fair? Does that sound unreasonable? No, I, I think that we would, we, you know, I don't have as much contact with the client as Dana does, but I think the, under the circumstances, you have complete discretion. We're asking for five. That's what the statute says we can get up to, but it doesn't say you have to give us the entire five at one time. And he you did know? say, he did outright say, well, the bins are almost done and they're working on a retention bond and that's going right. to be, but we hear yeah. this all the time. So if yeah. it's almost done, I don't think this is going to be a problem with a whole nother year to do this. That's, that's just where I stand on that. Right. Understood. Yep. I, I think he hears you too. Yep. You know. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Suzak. Mr. Chair, in an effort to move this along, I'll make a motion that we approve a one-year extension for um, Tarno Nursery you know, Public Hearing 2836, um, because I, I, we're, we're never going to get any forward. So I, you know, I think we'll give him a year. We'll, we'll see what he does, and and if he makes some progress, then we'll give him another two or three or four years, whatever it happens to be. But what we want to do is we want to see some progress to occur within the next year. Are you what? Are you okay with putting the stipulations like Commissioner Grillo said about finishing the? Well, I think that you know, it, 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 I don't want to limit how much you know progress he can make. You, you no, know, but again, you put a minimum that he at least finishes. Well, I'm, the, I'm, I'm not sure that we can impose what the minimum is. You know, the thing is, what we need to do is we will just say we'll give you a one year extension only because again we don't we don't know what his cash flow is and we know that there's you know certain things that he can do that don't cost a lot of money. And if, if, if after that one year, he comes back and he says he still hasn't done the detention system, he still hasn't finished his bins, he still hasn't finished the ponds, then we'll know that, you know, the next time we won't grant him any more because of the fact that we know some of this doesn't cost money, but we can't stipulate that he has to spend money that he doesn't have. So in, in that vein, I think that, you know, the best we can do is just say, we'll give you a year, come back and tell us what the progress you've done. And, and if there's adequate progress, we'll give you some more time. So we're going to have to see some significant good faith. Yeah, and and like you said, you know, uh, hopefully we will. And but you know, like you said, we we can't dictate that he has to go out and and sell his house in order to make these improvements. And it's that kind of thing where, you know, I think that we we just l let him know that you know we're we're watching what he's doing and that you know if he wants him some more time, he better do something positive. Okay. Just to move it along, because we're sort of beating <laughs> a dead horse. So are you going to make a motion? I, I already made the motion. That was part Is of the motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. Roll call. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Um, Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. Benny Grillo. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. All in favor, none against. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good mm -hmm. evening. Um, discussion items. A, discussion with consultant regarding update of plan of conservation and development. Thank you. Welcome, Don. I think I think he fell asleep. <laughs> no, he unmuted and he just muted again. Oh, Don, are you there? I'm here. There you go. <laughs> Let me. Uh, sorry, I got a little confused here. I'm not sure where my video went. Oh, jump around through so many platforms that uh, all the icons are in different places. Good evening, Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, pleasure to be here tonight and 
looking forward to doing a brief, brief presentation on the plan of conservation and development and the work we've been doing. Uh, I believe up until this point, I've been before you guys for the zoning regulations. And tonight we're gonna shift gears to POC. So let me share my screen. adjusting my settings over here. Thank you. So uh, knowing that many of you haven't been on the commission long enough to do a, uh, do a POCD, I decided that I would uh, just do a brief overview on what the POCD is and the process we will be going through. Hopefully, it's my time. Okay. So the, uh, just starting with kind of this basic idea of what is planning, it's a process of preparing for the future or an approach to problem solving uh, strategy for improvement, a process of decision-making, continuous process of learning and adjustment, and prediction of the future with the risk of being wrong. That last one I kind of like the most because it is one of the biggest challenges we face with planning, is we do the best we can to plan for the future, but the future is always unknown. In the context of municipal decision-making, you know, in planning, we often talk about the idea of consensus and working towards consensus. Uh, that's what this graphic on the lower right hand side is really about. Without planning, we end up with kind of arbitrary, you know, uh, shoot at the hip decision making that's not tied to anything. With the with uh, proper planning, we end up with a process that we're never going to gain full consensus. Never. You know, everyone's not going to be in agreement, but at least provides us or part, uh, or sets us on a course that's at least in a similar direction. So the POCD is a comprehensive land use plan for the community. It's a, it's a physical plan for the development of the community, and it considers social, economic governance and infrastructure needs. Uh, for Enfield. It's long range and that it looks at a 10 year period or more. It's comprehensive and that it covers the entire town. And it's a statement of policies for decisions. I'm actually gonna skip the right hand side of that slide. Uh, it's a statement of goals and standards and policies for physical and economic development. This is essentially what 8-23 of the statutory authority says. Uh, it's the commission's recommendation for the most desirable use of land within the municipality for residential, recreational, commercial, industrial, and other purposes. And that's really where it's this tie to the zoning regulations. The idea is you guys are making decisions or will be making decisions through the POCD process about the use of land, how it's to be used, its uh, density, its intensity, and so forth. And then to coordinate development of the municipality and the general welfare and prosperity, and to make provisions for development of housing opportunities. This, out of all the slides I'm gonna show you tonight, is probably, to me, is the most important slide because it really breaks the plan down into three key things. The first one, not one of the three key things, uh, is this idea of identifying what's most important to the community. And we've already started working on that and I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. But the three key things that you're doing is first and foremost, you're deciding what it is you need and want to pre protect and preserve. That's the conservation aspect. So what are those, you know, what, what are the important open spaces or farmlands or floodplains that need to be protected and preserved? Once you identify what you, you want to protect and preserve, 
you can then focus on what it is you want to develop. What areas are best suited for residential, commercial, industrial, uh, and the density intensity of development. And once you then know what it is you want to develop or where you're going to develop, it's then planning for the infrastructure and the community facilities needed to support such development. Roads, sewer, you know, water, uh, senior center, youth center, ball fields, and so forth and so on. And that's really the essence of what is the POCD. The planning process we use, and we I believe I've talked about previously with you, you know, we look at where we are today in the existing conditions, where do we want to be in the future, how will we get there, what are we doing, is what we're doing working, and then implementation. And I'll continue to be discussing this with the steering committee, which leads me to ultimately our update. Uh, so what's been going on? So the steering committee has been established and it's scheduled to meet, I believe, next week for the first time. And we will start plotting through each of these topical areas. Uh, Goman York, along with town staff, uh, has been working on a number of things, uh, primarily data analysis and foundational materials that will frame the work of the steering committee. And the analysis and materials include existing conditions uh, and reports. I believe these have uh, the documents I've developed have been passed on to you. Uh, a community survey, which I'm going to talk more about in a few slides. Environmental mapping and analysis. So for the conservation natural resource section of the plan, we've completed the mapping. Uh, and I've started drafting what are kind of boilerplate sections to the plan that don't need uh, really the input of the committee. So the introduction, planning, and why we plan, and then this sustainability and resilience framework. I just want to talk about a few preliminary findings related to the existing conditions. And I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know, uh, <laughs> as we all live here in Connecticut. But some basic things that I think are important in looking at development trends and future development potential. You know, the state, the regions, and local job growth have been mostly stagnant for the past 30 years since the economic downturn in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, Enfield's employment has declined from 2007 on the 2017. Uh, that was the latest kind of economic census data is 2017 that that's available for. Enfield's population has been mostly stagnant, uh, fluctuating around 45,000 persons. Uh, however, the projections for Enfield's population is what kind of raises a concern, is that between now and 2040, it's projected that the town will contract by about 5,000 persons. Uh, the primary drivers of that is the fact that you are an aging community. And this is a common thing in Connecticut. I don't want you to think you're different. Uh, or odd, uh, but as a, as a population ages, it contracts in size because it ultimately has fewer children. Uh, therefore, as older persons die off, they're not replaced because of fewer children, they ultimately contract in size. And that is why, and in the more detailed analysis report, that's the reason why school enrollments have also been contracting within town. Your housing market uh, mostly recovered from the 2008 downturn. Uh, it dropped to a low median home sales, dropped to a low of 225,000 in 2013. In 2020, it returned to 273, which is just shy of the high in 2008 of 278,000. My gut is at this point in time now in 2021 with what's going on in the housing market, you've probably recouped that additional $5,000 in median home sales value uh, as we continue throughout the region to see prices increase. 
these are just some examples of some of the graphics provided in, uh, along with the report related to uh, population and ultimately the projections or that trend line out to 2044. And this is what I was talking about. When a community ages, it contracts in population. This is known as a population pyramid. It breaks out your population by age cohorts and it stacks them on top of one another. And if you look at this, you can actually see this large population group here. These are your baby, baby boomers, people born between 45 or 40, 1944 and 1964. And ultimately, as a population ages, people die off. So you see contraction in the top of it. You then, you then see Generation X, my generation, coming in behind the baby boomers as a smaller generation, followed by the millennials, who are a larger generation. But then look what happens here this contraction inwards. And that is the effect of an aging population. More people are living to older ages and other changes in society were having fewer children than we previously did. And therefore you see that contraction. So we're not replacing the population as quickly as we previously did. Uh, and there is your resultant contraction and uh, from that process, the contraction in school enrollments. And once again, this is a statewide phenomenon. Here I show the county phenomenon, uh, just to show you that you're not necessarily on your own. And in some ways your contraction may not be as uh, significant as some other places. You are predominantly an owner-occupied community, which also, other housing data shows you are predominantly a single family residential community. Your median household income uh, runs almost similar to the state and above uh, Hartford County as a whole. I'm not going to get into the specifics of these graphics, but this is just kind of the detail of look that we do at kind of the economics and what's going on. So this is uh, annual average employment as a percent of total employed by industry. And then this is average wave, uh, wage by industry. So we kind of take a look at what's going on, you know, probably not surprising, uh, you know, for Connecticut financial services being huge. You guys have seen some contraction in that, so not showing up as significant and so forth. Uh, but too far into the weeds for tonight. Uh, unemployment rate had been declining, which was great. We can see the spike here with COVID and hopefully as we move through the rest of this year with vaccines and so forth, uh, we'll see it return to normal levels. Uh, we have some data here on employment type by business. I think one of the, uh, one of the important takeaways here is kind of, you know, much more reliance on private sector for profit in Enfield versus say statewide or countywide where you see higher percentages of government employment and so forth. Uh, ultimately a good statistic to have and uh, just some data on annual wages and unemployment or uh, employment or total jobs. Also, your budget, kind of who your ta top taxpayers are, you know, recognizing the vacancy in the mass mutual building, what the future of that becomes, you know, that needs to be an area of focus, that needs to be an area of concern since that property has been your largest taxpayer. Uh, what happens to it moving forward will be important. Uh, grand list comparison, you know, I think you guys should feel really good about kind of the balance of your grand list. 60% is on, res is on uh, yeah, property taxes uh, with then other sources, motor vehicles coming in, personal uh, and other sources. You know, I think that's a fairly good distribution. I think, as you know, this, you know, compared to 
Connecticut statewide, you're relying specifically on property tax is a bit less than what we're seeing elsewhere. And that's a good thing. Uh, we also looked at kind of job flow in and out of the community. You have 14,700 people coming in the Enfield for work. You have almost 19,000 Enfield residents leaving town for work and 4,000 who live and work in town. And then this is a look at where people, uh, jobs by county subdivisions where workers are employed. So this is where the people in uh, Enfield go to work, the most common locations. And then these are the generators, the most common areas or communities that people come to to work in Enfield. This gives us an idea of how your community is interacting. And there is this uniqueness that you guys already know. You know, you kind of split your existence between Springfield and Hartford, physically and economically. Uh, you're interacting in kind of both metropolitan regions. Which brings me last to the community survey. Uh, we finally, I, I finally got a first look at the data this evening. My staff person sent it on late to me in the day. Lori, just so you know, you're going to be getting the files, uh, a link to the files probably tomorrow. Uh, there was over 500 respondents to the online survey that we did. Lori, we'll need to collect any paper surveys that may have been submitted uh, to the town and tally them in. But the... The, the findings, I, I've only skimmed them, but what I saw was definitely interesting. And the one overwhelming thing is, I think we had either five or six open-ended questions, which basically said, tell us what you think. And we have over 1,200 written narratives of people telling us what we think, what they think. So it's gonna take a little time to go through those written responses. Uh, but I have a feeling that they're going to be very insightful. And these are actually lifted. This is a Wordle uh, that our software creates from some of those uh, questions and so forth. And basically showing the most common words used in discussing that topic. So here on question 42, it said, what adaptive reuse ideas do you have for the 66 acre mass mutual campus? Uh, property in 316 out of the 512 uh, persons that responded responded specifically to this question housing apartments you know condos business small business these large words that are central are the most common words that were used i was a little bit surprised here because some of the some of the housing questions that we asked the answers were very kind of uh status quo, everything's fine with housing, we have enough kind of neutral opinions, but it just jumped out at me very quickly on this slide where we see elderly housing, senior housing, apartments, housing, condo, affordable apartments, uh, luxury apartments. The fact is, it, 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 this isn't a finding, but it's just a preliminary thought process on maybe this is something for us to dig into. Uh, just because housing came up so much in the context of that property. Something to consider and look at as we move forward. This was question 44. Please add any additional comments you may have regarding Same thing here. Largest words, you know, uh, showing that they were used more than other words. And, you know, economic development, taxes. Enfield Square Mall, Enfield Mall, you know, uh, I once again, I would say this evergreen walk is probably a reference to what maybe should be done with the mall. Uh, but this starts giving us a thought. Oh, and then some specific uses. We see Trader Joe's work in there. We see Whole Foods there, maybe telling us a bit about what the residents want in the community. As I said, 1200 <laughs> responses and narratives on these uh, open ended questions. So it's going to take much more than just looking at these, you know, quick summaries of common words used 
to uh, really figure out what the information is, what the answers and information is telling us. But that's essentially where we are and we're excited to have the committee starting next week and start digging into kind of the nuts and bolts of the POCD. So Mr. Chairman, I will stop there and I'm available if anyone has questions. Great, thanks, Don. Any questions for him? Seeing none, I will see you next meeting. Wow, I put you guys to sleep, I guess. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys, I appreciate it. No see problem. You Thank it's you. It's been a long night. Is the really <laughs> we're, we're worn out? Is what we are. <laughs> Understood. Understood. We're just worn out. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Thanks. Uh, the discussion items B, discussion regarding 28 Maple Avenue. Did everybody get the letter in their packet? And the new plans? So essentially, um, the property owner at uh, 28 Maple, they had gone before the, the commission for approval to increase the number of units. Obviously that application, if you remember, was uh, not approved. Uh, the owner would now like to restore the building just to a two family. Um, and there had been some concern previously from the commission. So we uh, just wanted to show you what their proposal is under their current building uh, permit application. Um, and you did get plans in your packet for the proposal. So um, we just wanted to kind of report that out to you. If you have any questions, um, let us know. Okay, I have one first. The first page of the plan in the, um, where the old existing foundation is, it says area of the house demolished to be rebuilt as the same footprint now, the new foundation in is not the same footprint. Sorry, no, I'm shuffling, <laughs> shuffling my papers to get the plan. Um, Um, from what I had understood, they had um, done a survey and the property or the foundation had to be or was supposed to be, I think, one foot in um, from the property line, um, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe um, that they had said they were going to do that. Um, I think, uh, Rick, did you do the um, inspection of the foundation when it was put in I did uh, it doesn't look like it is back to where it was before there's right. a couple reasons for that they did the street over so part of that open area that you now see there between the foundation and the sidewalk is part of that street re reconstruction that's mm -hmm. part of it um, the other issue was that the previous foundation was over the line and actually on town property. So he had to uh, put the foundation back on his own property. And one of the requirements were that uh, at the corner, it be, I believe it was a foot off the property line and six inches at the rear corner off the, uh, it would be the southeast corner of the property line. So looking at it as it exists today, there's there's a little bit of distortion just because of the, uh, mostly because of the work that was done by the town for the sidewalk and roadway down there. Right, I, I, I agree with everything you just said, but his plan is saying that he's gonna restore it back to the original footprint. Now, I don't think that's his intent because he's already put the foundation in which is smaller. 
And then I just noticed that the date on this plan is from 12 4 19. So this could be an old footprint from when he originally started this process. So I just would want to see an updated plan with the new footprint that's going to be followed. Because if we were to approve this, or somebody were to approve this, he could put the foundation back the way it was. Yeah, the asphalt that was supplied uh, was signed off by a surveyor that it was accurately put in. Um, and that may be deviate from what you see before you. Right, so maybe we just, or whoever gets the copy of the asphalt and attaches that to these files and we eliminate this page so there's no confusion. Yep. Commissioners, any questions on this? Now, how does the commission want to go forward with this? Do you want to allow something like this? Because it is a lesser use. The foundation's already existing. If he submits the proper site plan that Rick was referring to and attaches it to the plans, do you want them to come in front of us or are you okay with an administrative approval? Wouldn't you want to see the new plans yourself, sir? They're, they're, you, they're in our packet. Yeah, but you just Those said- aren't great plans. Okay. Um, well, no, 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 you, it, it, that's why I'm asking you guys. So it sounds like you want them to come back with the yeah. proper um, plans. Okay. Yep. I'm okay with it. I, I agree just... with Vinny. So, um, Mr. Chair, Vinny, um, then everything is done. Go ahead. Thank you, Jenny. Go ahead, Jen. Um, this technically would not require a full blown application before you, just if he's going back to what it was. Um, but are you saying that you would like us to uh, provide the more updated plan that shows the foundation that you're asking about? Yes. What I think we're That's saying is. What I think we're saying is due to the fact that the foundation was removed, there is no more grandfathered. Somebody at the town allowed him to put it back after we said no, but it's back. So the commission is very much involved in this and they just wanna make sure they're aware of what's happening um, because technically that whole shed side of this building was not an apartment, it was a commercial space. So, I mean, it should be put back as a commercial space. Now, I'm not saying that's the way the commission's gonna go. I don't know what way they're gonna go, but I think they wanna hear it. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, this is a legal non-conforming use. And if you recall, we've gone through the non-conforming use section and how it's changed statutorily. So, okay, and we've also if, gone through if, the fact that once it's willfully removed, it's no longer non-conforming. We've already I, established this. We want to hear it, Lori. It, it's, it's, the foundation shouldn't be there. Do we want to open this can of worms up again? No. Okay, thank you. So um, have him get it on the agenda. Please update the foundation plan, even if it's a copy of the new site plan, which I believe he already has so he doesn't have to spend any more money on his mm -hmm. architect or engineers. And uh, let's see if we can't get him moving forward with this and get the building wrapped up. He does do decent work and I'm looking forward to seeing the corner cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Alimo, your hands up. Yes, uh, I just have a question. I'm reading his letter here. Talks about uh, wiring being removed and new wiring roughed in. Has this been permitted and inspected? It's been permitted, yes, for the existing building. This work is being inspected as it goes? Absolutely, okay. yes. And I that's right from the building official. He is not doing anything wrong. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yep. And Rick, you have you have anything open on this property? Uh, no, the only thing uh, that we just recently addressed was the the fencing going across the sidewalk, uh, interfering with pedestrian traffic. So that he was contacted regarding that. He has enough room now on his own property or or off the 
the uh, sidewalk area to put that secure that area rather than across the sidewalk. Okay, well, hopefully it's not there much longer. So good. All right. So I mean, if we could get him on the next agenda, I'd be okay with that. And try to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jen. Anybody else questions about this property? Anything you're going to want to see? So we can get it when he comes in. No, just uh, as so if we could possibly get a set of plans, actual plans in our packet next week, I think that's what one of the commissioners just at Commissioner Grillo just asked for. Yeah. And so a set of plans and the updated uh, as built for the foundation, and then we should be good. All right. Thank you, Jen. All right. Yep. Okay. Moving on, correspondence. Are there any correspondence? I can't think of anything. I don't know if Rick or Lori has anything. I don't have anything. No, Rick, you're good. No, oh, nothing for me. Okay, thank you. Commissioner's correspondence. Mm -mm. Nobody? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, Director of Development Services report. I, um, not a whole lot to report. I do want to let you know that we um, met yesterday with Krog and the traffic impact study that's going to occur around the mall. So that is starting to um, take off. Of course, that was supposed to have been done about a year ago, but um, it's really hard to do a traffic impact study with no traffic. So that is uh, finally taking off. So we had the uh, kickoff meeting yesterday. Um, I did have a question for the commission. We've been, uh, re what, what, how do I put this? Um, where do you think pet grooming facilities should go? What, can I back up one second, Lori? Yeah. <laughs> on, on the traffic study around the mall you just mentioned. Yeah. Is the mall involved in that in any way? It will be. We'll, we'll um, include them as a stakeholder. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. Go ahead now. Yeah. So we've been getting a lot of requests for putting in pet grooming facilities. And there's obviously one in Petco. There's one in PetSmart. Um, those are certainly accessory to the retail operation. Um, but we don't actually allow it anywhere except for in residential zones as as a primary use. So um, it's very common to be included into personal services, but um, that's not the way it seems to be in our zoning rights. So we're just wondering what your thoughts are on that. So are our regulations out of the normal? Is that what you're saying? Perhaps. Well, no, yes. I, I'm being, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, is there a dog grooming operation in the entire town of Enfield? I don't know yes. how it would be any. Yeah. Is there one? Yes, there's a several. There's Where? one on Enfield Street. There's yeah. one on Enfield Street. There's one in Skidico Plaza. Has and there's a lady that does it out of her barn. Okay, so they are permitted as a, as a home occupation, but they're not listed anywhere else as a permitted use. Well, it's, I think they go under retail. So that, both, that's kind of the question. So, I mean, if, if they're selling dog collars and leashes and shampoos and whatnot. No, no, they have no, a dog no, I'm grooming. talking, no, I'm talking about dog grooming. I'm talking I, about the lady on Enfield Street. All she does is groom dogs at cats. Okay, and what the lady in Skidico Plaza. Lady in Skidico Plaza grooms dogs and cats because I've taken my dog to both of them. Okay, so do you think that they came in under personal services? Because that's the only thing we could think of. Retail. Unless it's unless it's under a certain, maybe they're doing it under, um, I don't know, maybe under vet things or something. There's got to be animal, animal hospitals. So, but that's maybe it's just that's a, a zone. Yeah, but that's a very specifically different use. 
okay. kennels, veterinarian services. Yeah. Then uh, I'd say retail. This, this is this is a personal service. I mean, it's it's almost like a a, a hair yeah. groomer, but for but dogs. It's retail. It's I would retail, consider it. Lori. I would consider it the same exact thing as a hair salon. Exactly. Okay, so so you I, would consider it a personal service. A men's yeah. hair salon, because I would never want to <laughs> imply oh. that a woman's hair supply. Oh. Ooh, you got to be very careful nowadays. So <laughs> being clear for the record. So, um, so we so if a personal service shop is permitted, yep, in whatever zone, then we can also include pet grooming as well. Yep. Unless you, unless you can come up with an uh, a reason no, I, that you don't think we should. It. No, I, I think that that's that's very reasonable. It's just that it's just not it's it's, it's mute in uh, in the uh, regulations. It just doesn't discuss it otherwise other than in the residential zone. It's big business now. Yeah, yeah it is very. Yeah. It's expensive. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so we can consider a personal service. Yep. I would okay. think so. everybody's everybody's good with that. I'm good. Yep. John, you're good with it. I'm good with it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, you very much. Consensus. Great. I appreciate that. That's all Thank you got. You. That that's all I have for now. <laughs> all righty. Lori. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it, can I have a question for Lori? Yeah. Sure. Um, what was the real estate transaction in the mall for $8.9 million? Target. Target. Target sold to or Target. I, I actually don't Target. know who I, I somebody told me it wasn't Target that purchased it, but I don't know whether it's some other company that oversees the Target. I, I don't the current, I don't. the current mall people that we divided the lots up for sold that piece. Yeah. Figaro's is sold. Now Target is sold, and I believe Wendy's has sold. Was that all in that $8 million figure that was reported? No. No, those are three different transactions. Okay, because I've only seen that one. Yeah. So far. Okay, okay. moving Thank on. You. Administrative approval report. Jen? Um, so again, we're just reporting these out, um, 1010 Enfield Street, which is the Alcorn School. Uh, there is going to be a basketball court constructed over there. Um, the commissioner will remember there was a basketball court over there before. Um, I think they ended up turning that into a parking area and they're putting another amenity back, which is always a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a nail salon already in the Big Y Plaza. Um, there's another nail salon going in there. Um, so just taking over another space or the same space. Switching uh, ownership. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> um, and then uh, 145 Hazard Avenue, uh, just a, a business office for video editing going into um, a property that is business professional zoned with offices already. So. Um, uh, and like then for movies? it's video editing and post-production. So um, I'm not sure if they're doing movies or um, Rick might know a little better. He does. Rick saying no, no movies. They're just uh, editing film and uh, he edits films for commercials, things of that sort, and then sends it back off to the uh, customer. That's all. Good. Nice. Something new in town. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Um, the, uh, the commission just approved allowing, um, personal services within the business professional zone. So we are, um, there, or there was a request for a hair salon to be, to go into the Enfield professional park. Um, so, uh, there's that. And then the, uh, phantom fireworks, they come back every year to the, um, to the mall They're they've put in an application to come back again this year. Um, and then the Smash Burgers restaurant, which was approved recently, unfortunately, is no longer mm -hmm. in the Stop and Shop Plaza, but uh, there now wants to be a sushi and ramen restaurant that goes into that space. Hmm. Good. You guys have been busy. Very busy. <laughs> Good. 
All righty. Applications to be received. Uh, we have several text amendment applications. Um, three, in fact, coming up. Um, only one of those is um, from the town itself. Two of them were um, applications um, from other uh, property owners. Uh, one for um, a proposal for pro uh, private farmers markets allowed in industrial zones and another for allowing child daycare facilities and larger buildings within the limited office overlay zone. Um, and then of course, we had talked to the commission about updating the um, lake overlay district to accommodate higher lot coverage for smaller properties in the lake district. So mm -hmm. um, that'll be coming before you, um, as well as an application to expand a non-conforming use at 556 Hazard Avenue. Um, to allow small engine repair in a place that already has a tenant for um, uh, general repairs of auto uh, automobiles. So uh, that's what we have, and we have a lot more coming <laughs> coming down the line. So I think we're going to be pretty busy this spring and summer. Are you guys full staff now? Not quite yet, <laughs> um, but we are hoping to be soon. We actually are interviewing for uh, the other assistant town planner tomorrow. And we so will be reaching out to uh, hire the secretary one to replace Pam soon as well. So you're down two right now. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. Um, opportunities and unresolved issues discussing planning and zoning and wetlands merger. Uh, I have nothing on it. Lori, you have nothing on it. That would be correct. Okay. Um, motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. In two weeks. Good night, all. And we'll see some of you uh, on Wednesday. For our kickoff meeting for POCD. <laughs>